didn't connect before you started recording and live streaming uh, to seek permission to make brief opening remarks. Absolutely. Without question. We'll just give everybody another two minutes before we get started. We had a lot of people who RSVP'd. Um, Barbara Rudder, I completely oh, yeah, blame yeah. you for my son keeping to call, keep calling out your name every time he sees you on the screen. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to take Teddy away from the dining room table because he can't see you without calling out your name and expecting you to cater to his every need. <laughs> Love Barbara's house, I know. Yes. <clears throat> well, we're, 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 getting, we're getting populated. Oh, there's a tree. Oh, there's a tree. Oh, <laughs> You're ready for me to give the instructions. That sounds great. Sure. All right. So welcome, everyone. If this is your first time joining us for one of our virtual committee meetings, um, we're happy to have you. And you'll notice that you're muted, and you're going to stay <laughs> muted throughout the duration of the meeting. The only folks who will be unmuted at any time are the co-chairs, Barry and Tricia, and any members of the Parks Department, whoever who's giving a presentation. Um, following each presentation and each agenda item, uh, we will be accepting comments from the public if you would like to participate. All you have to do is find the reactions icon on your screen and press the raise hand button there. Do not press the thumbs up or the wave, those will disappear. Only press the raise hand button once. If you press it a second time, your hand will go back down. If you're calling in from the phone, it's star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute whenever you're called on. Be on the lookout for a prompt asking you to confirm unmuting once each of the, one of the co-chairs calls on you. Uh, if you're having any problems with Zoom, the chat is available for technical support, but it's only for technical support. It is not to ask questions of the co-chairs or the presenters. They will never see those chats. If you're using an older version of Zoom, you may need to go to the participant section where you'll be able to find the raise hand feature there. And finally, we ask that you do not raise your physical hand or wave at the screen. There's a lot of people in the room. We may not be able to see you and we may miss you. So if you're having any problems, chat me. I'm here to support. Great. Thank you, Will, and welcome everybody. My name is Trisha Shimamura. I'm one half of the Parks and Waterfront Committee, along with- Barry Schneider, the other half. Um, sometimes. We've got a full agenda tonight, but we wanted to, I wanted to first uh, kick it off with our council member, Ben Kalos. Thank you very much for having me uh, and for your leadership. I'm council member Ben Kalos and I love parks. I loved parks uh, and worked with our Congress member Carol Maloney on our East River Esplanade Task Force, uh, even before I really realized how important they were. Now that I'm a dad with a three-year-old, I am at Rupert Park, I would say, every day. Rain, snow, sleet, it doesn't matter because we have a small New York City apartment and there is no way we are staying home. Uh, and so we've been able to uh, work with the Parks Department and Mayor de Blasio on securing something like, at this point, $950 million for our parks. So uh, we've got a $900 million new Esplanade coming in. Carl Schurz Park saw a $4 million renovation. Uh, 24 Sycamores got a new comfort station. 14 Honey Locust got a million dollars to be rebuilt. Uh, and John Jay Park, we just broke ground on $650,000 of work. And um, I'm afraid that we hadn't paid attention that we were supposed to to Rupert, mostly because I guess I lived close by and I felt bad about it. But um, we were able to raise $8.9 million as of the uh, July 1st budget. And I will tell you about parks. 
Um, they are moving at light speed. I, I reached out to Parks and I said, Parks, I, Parks Department, I'm, I'm done. And uh, at the time it was longer, but now it is literally 22 days. And I said, if we secure the money, can you really get us to design before I am done so we can announce it, so we can hear from the community and so we can get the ball rolling so that construction can start next September. And so I'm actually hopeful that that is what the track we were on in terms of the $8.9 million. I wish I could say it all came from me, uh, but it's a good thing that we were able to get it from a lot of sources. So $5.3 million came from my office. Uh, $200,000 came from council member Keith Powers. Uh, $100,000 came from Manhattan Borough President Gilbert, even though she said she wasn't gonna give it to us, she did at the end. And we received $3.3 .3 million from the city council through uh, Speaker Corey Johnson. And uh, we also have some funding coming from assembly member Dan Court. Uh, when we were listening to folks and, and I'm literally there every day, some things that folks felt was incredibly important, a bathroom. So I'm hoping that our design has room for a bathroom and whether we're able to do an incredibly low cost port loop uh, or a uh, lower, a little more money on a, a standard comfort station. I'm hoping that there will be room for it. Uh, a lot of the playgrounds have swings, but Rupert doesn't. So I'm hoping that we can see that. Uh, the Car Carl Schurz, I think, is a great model of a new playground with great equipment that a lot of folks love. Uh, and so I'd love to see some equipment that is similar in uh, engagement. And the water features, I was a little disappointed with Carl Schurz where they just have the sprays from the ground. So I'm hoping to see all sorts of sprays that are actually competitive with a lot of the spray pads that I see, uh, whether it's at Jones Beach or other destination parks. And I'm hoping that this will become the destination park in the summer with spray features that are not only coming from the ground that are ADA accessible, but uh, towers that missed. And then of course, overhead water um, I'm hoping that parks will consider uh, taking advantage of the, the, the landscape and the fact that the topology of the park uh, changes. And I was hoping to see a, uh, some sort of slide built into that topology that gives kids an excuse to run up and down and run around that slide. Um, and um, I think the other part was making sure that we actually had separation between the play area and the regular area, we heard a lot about it as a parent. Frequently, we have people who are smoking tobacco or marijuana in the children's area. And the hope is that through the separation, you can have an area for kids where there's actually a gate and you don't have the mixing of everything, which is what we see at John Jay, what we see at Carl Schurz and other parks. So I'm really hoping we can see that delineation of space. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, there's been these staircases everywhere and uh, Every time I'm there, there's always one kid who falls down the steps. And so I'm hoping that we don't really have those steps in the children's areas where you have that conflict. And um, I'm just hoping for a park that feels more like a park where we're not going to have drainage issues, where we're not gonna have mosquitoes and where everyone's able to have a space that they can enjoy. So um, I'm eager to hear from parks. I think for me, uh, with 22 days, whatever I see, I'm hoping I'm gonna like, and uh, I'm gonna be doing everything I can to move this project forward so that we can get it done in a timely fashion. Uh, and I wanna thank Alex uh, from Parks, who is our designer. Uh, I, I took paternity leave, I'm really glad he took paternity leave. And as soon as he got back from paternity leave, he went straight to work getting this done. So I'm really excited to see this and uh, I want to acknowledge we've been joined by uh, Vanessa Diaz Lopez from the Borough President's Office. Again, thank you for that hundred thousand dollars from the Borough President, and uh, the, uh, the the uh, the comfort station isn't fully funded yet. So I don't care whether Gail Brewer is the speaker or the Manhattan delegation chair. I'm still going to be looking to her for funding. Uh, so I'll turn it back over to the chairs. I want to thank. Barry for his years of service dating back to when I was on the community board and Trisha for being an ever present uh, leader on parks issues uh, for as long as I've been a council member and have the privilege of, I, I don't remember if she's my appointment or Gail's appointment uh, or if we had a fight over who got to appoint her, 
but she's been doing great work on parks. And I could thank every single one of you from Judy to, to Barbara to Irma, to, and now I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but just thank you all for your great service. We're really lucky to have you. And uh, I'm hoping folks have an opportunity to, to make their voices heard tonight. Great. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. And on behalf of the community board and everybody here, thank you so much for allocating the funds to this. This is, um, there is not one single park in our district that is more needing of that of that funding. So we really, really deeply appreciate it. Um, Barry, just before we go into the parks presentation, I just want to also give a shout out to the, uh, to Mubeen, uh representing the Muslim Volunteers of New York and Nancy Plager, who also uh, were, were just uh, steadfast advocates for this, have been taking care of that park. If you, like Ben, live near or use that uh, Rupert Park and you've noticed new plantings there or you've noticed it cleaned up or you notice music in the park, it was because of the Muslim volunteers. Um, so many, many thanks to, to that group and I'm sure that we'll hear from them soon. Good. Uh, Leslie, are you the person who's uh, from Parks? Who's going to be, or Alex? Who's who's our Parks representative? Who's going to be? Actually, I, I think Steve may be giving a little introduction. Uh, Steve Simon's here. Oh, great! And then Alex will be doing the presentation tonight. Fantastic. Fine. Let's hear from Steve. Uh, well, um, I, I certainly hope that we're going to be able to satisfy the council member. Because uh, he uh, certainly did a hell of a lot of work to uh, uh, raise uh, close to uh, nine million dollars for this project, and um, uh, between uh, between him, the council speaker, the uh, uh, council member Powers, uh, uh, President Brewer, I'm sure that he uh, he went to the till and uh, lobbied each one of them. So we we have a an unusual opportunity here to uh, remake this park and. Uh, uh, make it uh, a more uh, uh, of a community asset, more usable. And, uh, and I think uh, we're working in that direction. Um, uh, I'm very, uh, you know, we got an awful lot of uh, input uh, uh, from the public on this project. Uh, and I must say an unusual amount of, uh, of uh, input, uh, not only at the uh, scope meeting, but afterwards uh, written comments. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, some people wanted this, other people didn't want it. Some people wanted uh, uh, X, uh, others didn't want it, but uh, I think, uh, you know, I don't know that we're going to make everybody happy, but I, I certainly think that uh, we're going to make uh, uh, a lot of people happy with this plan. Uh, but keep in mind what we're presenting tonight is only a concept plan. Uh, we're going to uh, continue to uh, consider your input. And uh, uh, this is the first bite at the apple. We're going to come back in uh, January. Uh, I believe it's your January 13th meeting with a, a formal design proposal. And uh, at that point, uh, we're going to ask you to uh, uh, to give that uh, uh, your uh, uh, your consideration and uh, tell us at that point uh, what, uh, whether or not you would uh, approve it or not. So I uh, uh, I don't want to hold up the works any longer. Uh, Alex Zervos is the uh, is our landscape architect, uh, project manager, and uh, he is the one who will do the presentation tonight. And uh, a few of us uh, from Parks are here to back him up. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Alex, it's all yours. Thanks, uh, and it's. I guess I'll share my screen. Let me see if I could do this. Uh, okay, and make sure everyone can see it. Let me do a full screen. And okay, share. And can everyone see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm Alex Zervos, and um, I was actually. Uh, I was, I remember the community visioning from May. So thank everyone. I'm thanking everyone for coming tonight. Um, and this slide sort of tells exactly what the council member and everyone said, the funding, uh, where it came from. Uh, and so thank you to the council member, to everybody else who, who funded this project. Um, and it's about an acre in size. Um, let me go through these slides here. So our goals overall, and what we kind of, we took from the community visioning, um, we were, aiming to provide play spaces um, that are currently there and reconstruct them. Um, and then we really wanted to focus on access to the park as well. Um, and then to create a series of passive seating and gathering areas in the park. Uh, so I think everybody here knows the site location, 
Uh, we're between 90th and 91st on 2nd Avenue. And then we're out of the flood zone, which is good. Um, we're out of, this is a flood risk map. And then surrounding land use, again, everybody, um, everyone that knows you know, what's around, but there's a lot of mixed use, commercial, et cetera. In the neighborhood context, just to tell the story of, of green space um, around the site and sort of contextually what's around uh, subways. And I think the, the, these neighborhood context maps, you know, I won't stick on it too long, but they always tell the story, I think, that, that we're striving for green space here and how special Rupert Park really is contextually. Um, and you know, as an asset, as Steve said, uh, to create it, to make it an asset to the community as a park. Um, and then existing conditions. Um, it's a remarkable site. Uh, you know, this plan's flat, but uh, some other slides will tell the story of the slope. But overall, there's substantial green space that's currently unused. Uh, the two play equipment areas, um, the central sort of uh, planter that's sort of filled with soil, um, and then uh, you know the informal dog run, and then sort of the perimeter around the site on 90th, 91st, and Second Avenue. So this section just is to help. Um, I think everybody knows, but there's there's actually a 15 foot grade change from Second Avenue looking up the site. So this section sort of helps to just visually see uh, that and sort of the challenge of uh, of interconnecting the spaces, and then also uh, making this slope an asset, you know, making it something that, that makes this park special and uh, maximizing spaces through it. Um, and sort of another uh, undertone is accessibility is that uh, the blue areas so where there's accessibility and then there's always sort of a segmented red that sort of splits the, the side apart. And then really one of the areas we focused on too is that when you look at Second Avenue, um, you enter, but you're sort of stuck if you're in a stroller or in a wheelchair. Um, so that we wanted to sort of activate Second Avenue and then also maximize 90th and 91st and make the site as accessible as possible. Uh, tree inventory, I always love these slides, especially this one. Uh, we have 88 trees on the site. Um, so our arborist, we went out, um, we inventoried all the trees um, and uh, you know, we strove to, uh, to, to keep almost every tree that we could on the site um, and then you know, right now the trees are in these geometries of circles and that's that's there now. So we wanted to sort of play off of that, but try to crack those circles open and find more uh, fluid openings and paths through the site. Um, and then several trees that were assessed were found to be uh, in poor condition. So they're sort of, you see them there X'd either, either as a stump or as, uh, as a removal because of their condition. And then just a series of photos. I know everybody uh, knows the site, but um, just things as you enter off Second Avenue, again, this is what you uh, come across as a user. And so we want to strive for universal access to the site. Um, and then looking down again um, and just seeing the slope and then sort of these layers of fence uh, and then everything sort of getting lost and mixed matched. Um, and then the slope again, these areas, I know they're not accessible right now. I heard everybody at the community visioning and every time I go out there, there's no access, they're barred off. So we wanted to open these spaces up again and let them shine. Um, play, play structures, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see the kids out there and how they use the structure. So it was amazing to see how they were using them. We, we, you know, I have young kids and I, I find that uh, they make the most out of something they're given. So uh, we just wanted to make sure that as we thought about play equipment, that it wasn't just the structure that was plopped onto the site, but how it would sort of tie into the topography, the site context, et cetera. Um, and this is another shot again. Uh, and there's the existing conditions on the street for 90th, 91st and 2nd Avenue, just for ourselves, for the perimeter fence and conditions around it. So I'll just, I'll jump right into it. Um, this is the concept plan that we came up with. Um, and I'll, I'll move from Second Avenue and sort of upward on the slope uh, towards the west. So we're abandoning the central access. Um, again, we, we're retaining all the trees uh, with one tree removal to uh, for a crab apple to make a path entry. And so we we wanted to to crack open the circles, retain the trees. We have two paths now off Second Avenue that that intertwine to paths leading up. Mm -hmm. um, so no stairs. Uh, we have one set of stairs here because of the substantial grade change, but all these paths would be ADA accessible. So a user in a wheelchair or, um, or in a stroller could realistically come off second, come off 91st, 90th and access the site. Um, so as you enter, um, there's a seating area down to the south where we found that we can make, potentially make a flatter plane for seating. And then we have passive lawn areas um, in those sloped areas that, and we 
are regrading them to make them more gentle so people could sit down in these areas. Um, a future comfort station that's master planned uh, for, as the council member said, if there's uh, additional funding in the future, that would happen right here. Um, and then as you come up, uh, we, we separated off the playground area to the rest of the site that would have a low fence and a gate entry here off 90th and a secondary one off 91st. Um, the paths are a little bit more fluid. They work, intertwine off the grades and the trees. And then because we're striving for universal access um, and universal accessibility throughout the site, um, we thought it would be really fun to pick up on this really remarkable high point that happens right here towards the west of the site on the southwest. So we were thinking um, you come into the play area, there's this sort of path that comes up to an overlook, a slide feature with a rock scramble that comes down. Um, and then again, it loops back. The water play that's currently located right around here would be centrally located, um, picking up off sort of the geometry in the center. Um, and then there, we, we would like to put a swing set, then that would happen here on the Northwest. Um, with And there will be a visual of that as well. So with uh, AD accessible swing and uh, several other swings. And there will be several slides showing this equipment. We're working currently with the manufacturer um, with the goal that there would be an access point here with a bridge feature that would then bridge to this play structure and then a catwalk loop for anyone in a wheelchair to be able to, to experience uh, the play equipment as well from the top and the bottom. Um, and then we have a two to five um, play equipment that would happen uh, as you enter. And then again here, so we're looking for five to 12 and then two to five, and then again, sort of a slide area right at that high point that brings the, the kids down and sort of makes a, a loop walk. Um, this is just a quick diagram, accessibility before and after. So there's this flight of stairs, but the site itself is all accessible um, throughout. And then this is just the conceptual perspective of the play area and sort of that idea that you enter, mm -hmm. there's this loop up, the slide down, and then this, this connection to the, the feature so that it's just not freestanding and just sitting in the middle of space, but it intertwines with the paths and becomes universally accessible. And then the water play area. And I think the council member had said this at the beginning, but it, um, it's funny, we were thinking the same thing as we were designing so that it, we wanted to do ground sprays, but maybe pick up on the fact there's all this verticality and do some spray features that are vertical shooting down as well. Um, so then conceptually, some of the play equipment we're working with the manufacturer. This is all conceptual, but we want to pick up tones that are on the site. So natural tones. And then uh, this would be that bridge connection that leads you through and then a spiral slide that comes down and the swings. And then this is the bridge coming off of the path of the loop. Um, and so kids were able to come into the tower and then anyone in a wheelchair would be able to come out across this, do a, a loop around the catwalk as well. And then also access with the clearance from below. Um, and then this is the slide feature. Uh, it'd be the walk looping up this way and then back connecting right here at that bridge point through the features. And we are working with the manufacturers, I said, so we, we're looking to make um, as many features as we can that are for the kids and for all the age groups and for, for those in wheelchairs as well. Um, and these are just features that, again, that we're working on. I know Carl Schurz was brought up and uh, building off of these components that we are working with the manufacturer to make um, to make them uh, correlate to the five to 12, but also add, add as many features as we can uh, to them. Uh, and then the swing area as well uh, with the AD accessible swing, the bucket and the two swings. And then the tones that are in there, they just played off the tones that are currently on the site. They're these beautiful, the greens, um, the hues, the copper, the, the silver. So that's how we're working with the manufacturer to pick up on those tones. And this is just a section now showing that sort of very harsh slope now is becoming more of a, a gentle rolling slope um, in the play area. And then just these points that you could have passive lawns and, and paths that intertwined all the way down a second. So visually uh, the kids could look down, but then someone from down below could also look back up. And then precedent images, these are sort of these, uh, these vertical sprays downward. Um, we're thinking maybe we could do some grounds, maybe some unique ones, and then just some slide features from other parks in Manhattan. Um, our site furnishings uh, that we're currently thinking conceptually to intertwine on the site. Um, and then for pavements and curves, um, conceptually, we're just thinking there's these beautiful moments. I think of the exposed aggregate concrete pavement on the site. We're just thinking to, to, that we can maybe intertwine that into the, the pavements along the entire loop since they are so fluid. 
um, and then add these tones and then have the seating area be a concrete hex block that sort of says, hey, there is a, there's a seating stoppage point here. Our plant palette that we're conceptually thinking about um, in the areas uh, for shade tolerant, just very hardy, uh, and that give also some, just some cheer with, with flowering as well and low maintenance. And then as a fence diagram, uh, there's a seven foot fence currently on the back of this site on the adjacent property. We're looking to retain that to keep a, a, a solid border and then the perimeter fence to potentially uh, lower it to four feet. Uh, and then this would be, again, the separation of the play area with a low fence, a gate point here, a secondary one here. And so there would be a you know, playground area and then there'd be a park you know, to, to the south of that fence. So there, there'd be a clean fence line as well. So there wouldn't be all these little segmented fences everywhere. Uh, sustainability analysis, we right on par to keep the existing and the proposed uh, equivalent, which is great. Uh, and we're gonna try to keep, keep to that as much as we can uh, and increase if we can as well. Um, and then again, the conceptual plan that we're looking at. Um, yeah, and so I'd say thank you. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, uh, it's a, a great site to, to look at. It's a great site to sort of uh, think about. So I, that, that's, um, thank you. Alex, thank you very much. A very comprehensive presentation and eye-opening one as well. Trish, you wanna handle it from here? Please. Yeah, thank you so much, Alex. Um, and I also just want to, I Barry, I got your note. I wanted to welcome Sheena, uh, our our director, our our district director. I, I think that's maybe her title, uh, the new West Hamilton uh, <laughs> to this position. And I know that we're going to hear from her later. But thank you so much, Sheena, for being here. Um, we are going to open it up uh, to the public first for questions, and then to uh, members of the committee. Um, just to remind everybody, this is again uh, in concept right now. So um, we are not going to pass a resolution on this tonight. Um, we, I would welcome people to give uh, feedback and thoughts on this um, so that when we see kind of the, the final proposal in January, the committee can make a, a good um, decision on this. Uh, so with that said, we'll go to Mubeen uh, from our Muslim volunteers from New York. Mubeen, you just have to confirm unmuting and then you can speak. There you go. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I think, um, you know, we uh, one, uh, thank you so much for the presentation and thank you, Trisha, for the shout out. Um, we at Muslim Volunteers have really become so committed to this park. Uh, it, it's a very personal thing for us now. We've been associated with it since 2015. Uh, following in the foot, a very big footsteps of Nancy Plager. And, um, you know, the, the parks, you know, obviously is the central focus of the very, a very large community on the Upper East Side as a resting um, place and a tranquil place and a playground. Uh, some, a lot of the ideas are seem amazing, such especially the accessibility for people with all kinds of needs and special needs. One of the questions I have is, is there any element of the park that's going to be assigned for a dog run of some sort. Uh, at the moment, we we don't have a, a dedicated dog run incorporated uh, in the design, um, and so we focused on we focused on passive lawn areas and the playground, and then sort of having the site be um, sort of an open uh, an open palette for anyone visiting. Uh, so we currently don't have a, a dedicated dog run on the plan. Well, one of our concerns is that we've been here now uh, almost seven years and we've tried, and I know the New York City Parks over the years has tried, Community Board 8 has tried, we've tried every number of things to keep people, the few people in the community that choose not to abide by the rules surrounding um, managing their dogs and pets in this green space. So I think we have to come up with a viable and long-term solution that actually works because, you know, the people have been ticketed, all kinds of things that happen, but people continue to use this place as a dog run and they won't stop. So I feel if you truly want a long-term solution, the Northeast quadrant of the park is hardly used. I know you have plans for it now, but how about dedicating a portion of that to a dog run? Because that we need to also meet the needs of the entire community, right? I mean, we can counsel them, we can advise them, but it hasn't worked for, from what I understand for 20 odd years. So I feel like we need to dedicate a portion of the playground 
uh, I mean, of the, the park to, you know, meet the needs of dog owners because they're, not everyone is abiding by the rules and the Parks Commission and the city have not been able to successfully contain them from bringing their dogs and letting them run astray throughout the park, ruining the plantings and also creating a lot of unsanitary situations. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mubin. Uh, we'll go to Carla and then Amanda. Hi, yes, I just wanted to echo what was just said. I'm really concerned that there is no dedicated dog area. Um, everyone I've spoken to um, has, has um, submitted um, comments about this. I know that we've really urged all the dog owners in the area to make sure that our voice is heard. Um, my husband has a physical disability. And it's really hard for him to travel very far with his service animal. And I've written um, to the council member about this. Um, this is the only area that's really within walking distance to where we live. Um, Central Park and Carl Schultz Park are just too far away for him to, um, to get to, um, to be able to take our dog, our service animal um, to meet her needs. And so we've been using this um, space and I just, um, I really wanna make sure that, um, that, the, that our needs are gonna be met in this park as well. I mean, we have a child, we use the park for other reasons, but um, it's really important. There's really no um, walking distance uh, spaces for my husband. Thank you, Carla. Can we go to Amanda and then Sarah? Yeah, not a ton to add there. I also just wanna echo that I am here as a, a dog owner and I know that it's, it's a very not sanitary area right now and it is not somewhere that people should be taking dogs right now. But if there was a dedicated area that would alleviate so much of the current unsanitary conditions um, you know, I think folks are, you know, like, like others have said, people are going to continue doing it, um, whether it's allowed or not. And I think that if, if we're actively seeking to meet those needs, then that will alleviate um, a lot of the current um, conditions of the park. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. We'll go to Sarah and then Ashley. Thank you, uh, and good evening to everybody. Um, I am, uh, and actually, Trisha, I think it's your birthday, so happy birthday, if I'm not mistaken. So I thought I would just throw that out there because it popped up in Facebook. So hope you're having a good day. Thank you, Sarah. Um, but I I'm going to say something that's you know different from what people, other people have said about a dog run. Um, and first, I, you know, the idea that because people are mismanaging their dogs in the park that we should just make it easier for them is a, kind of a bad concept in my opinion. And uh, what I have heard from our elected officials and seen myself is that in Carl Schertz Park where there in fact are two dog runs, uh, which are supposed to contain where dogs go in Carl Schertz Park don't work at all. And that people continue to misuse other areas of the park for their dogs. So I, I just don't think having a dog run is going to change those behaviors. Um, and so then my other sort of concerns about having um, a dog run is that the, the park is small, it's one acre, and a dog run is really a single use. It's, it's not, you can't really do anything else with it. I mean, some of these other areas, I'm looking at the map, you have passive lawn, seating areas, many different kinds of people who are there for different reasons can use those areas. Um, a dog run is for one purpose and one purpose only. And so um, we would be giving up part of a very small park in a congested neighborhood for that. Um, there are already two dog runs in our neighborhood. Uh, in Carl Schertz, there are two. Um, and large sections of Central Park are open for dogs off leash in the mornings and in the evenings. And those parks may be further than people would prefer to travel, but they both are walking distance. Um, and um, my concern, because I live on one of the, I, I live on the, uh, towards Third Avenue side of the park, and there are apartments in close proximity to all four sides of this tiny park. And so with a dog run, and I can hear from my window on the 13th floor, I can hear the dogs um, in the, on the 90th, on the second street, um, second Avenue side of the park, I can hear them from time to time. And, um, and so, and then sanitation, I mean, how I have not heard, first of all, I wanna say that the designs are lovely, 
and the plants are lovely. And, but I'm just wondering what's the plan for taking care of this park once it is renovated? Um, and especially like a dog um, run area, how is that going to be kept sanitary and clean and I have, and, and, and safe. I mean, I've heard stories about dogs getting sick at the Carl Schertz um, dog run, actually at one of these meetings a couple of months ago. And so there's, I guess that's a concern for all dog runs. Um, and then also just the positioning with residences that, um, you know, I, I looked at Carl Schertz Park and the dog runs are deep into the park and they are not near any residences at all. And Central Park is huge and there are areas for dogs and they are far from residences. This would be, this park is surrounded by residences just across the street um, on all sides. And so the, the sort of the quality of life issues associated with the dog run um, are key. And so that's just basically my, um, those are my concerns. And um, I know that people don't agree with me, but I know that there are people that do agree with me. And so that's just what I need to say. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, we'll go to Ashley next, then um, Jane, and then I just, I got a note saying that Sarah Gallagher and Nancy Plager may also have questions. So we'll go to Ashley, then Jane, then we'll go to Sarah and uh, Nancy to see if they have questions. Um, hi, I would just like to add to the number of um, dog owners advocating for a dedicated space, Central Park, um, that I'm aware of does not have anything that is enclosed. They do have off-leash hours, but not all dogs are able to uh, run off-leash. Carl Shorts and Central Park are not in walking distance for many people or dogs. Um, there's, I don't know, thousands maybe, at least hundreds of people in the neighborhood that um, need a space. One acre, in my opinion, and I've been to Rupert Park several times, um, I do not use it, um, you know, against the rules right now, but I think it's a shame that there is, in my opinion, space to accommodate both children and dogs, and that is not being taken advantage of right now. Um, um, that's all. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ashley. We'll go to Jane, and then we'll go to Sarah Gallagher. Hi. Um, I'd just like to echo what um, Sarah Wilkins has so carefully detailed in terms of problems with a dog run. Um, I frankly don't see a lot of room for, for that. I live quite, ne quite near Carl Schur's Park, and I can echo that there is, um, since <laughs> it's, it's wonderful to see all the dogs running around, but it is quite noisy, and if there are houses around, which there certainly are, Rupert, that may be a, may be a substantial consideration. Uh, but I congratulate um, Alex. I think you've done a, a great job. I just wish, you know, we had a long slide all the way down, but I guess that would be too dangerous. But, um, but congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Jane. We'll go to... Uh... Will, can you unmute Sarah Gallagher just to see if Sarah has still a question and then Nancy Plager? Hi. Um, first, uh, these are just like very brief questions uh, and you know, suggestions sort of things. Um, the illustration showed like six swings. Hopefully there are more. I'm keeping having in mind um, St. Catherine's Park where there seem to often be lines for kids waiting to uh, get on the swings. Um, for a park as large as, as Rupert, I've seen that, you know, a fair number of swings, um, beloved swings would be appropriate. Um, the, on the, um, the pavers, hopefully they are not going to be asphalt um, with the um, ensuing acid runoff from them. There are um, <clears throat> all but identical um, um, papers to be used that are, are much more environmentally friendly and, um, and including ones that are permeable, um, which would certainly, I think, help with the runoff issue that, I mean, it is a slope. So 
And last but not least, um, emphasis on native plants. Um, as we may or may not know, um, the um, Esplanade is now an official uh, uh, monarch butterfly migration route. We've got lots of pollinators going on. Um, we have threatened lightning bugs in the, in the area. Um, so how about as many um, native pollinator friendly um, plants as possible? Thanks so much. Thanks, Sarah. Um, and thank you for always for taking care of our, if you ever pass by a green street on the Upper East Side, uh, a median that's beautiful and well taken care of, it's probably because of Sarah Gallagher. Um, so thank you. Um, can we go to Nancy Plager? Hi, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the, Alex, I really appreciate the explanation and all the details that you all have, and thought put into this. and certainly for the expansion of the playground. Um, just a couple of uh, observations, and I know hopefully this would all be taken care of, but one concern has always been obviously the irrigation system. Um, and if you've taken that into consideration for the entire park, which I'm sure you have. Um, the second is when you do have the water area, as most of us know, having been around the park a lot, is that there's a tremendous amount of waste. Um, this is our precious water and these water uh, sprayers stay on 24 seven, um, which is just impossible and is really terrible that we're wasting our, our precious water that way. So again, the irrigation, the water, that's all a big concern that we have the um, capability to manage that uh, segment. Um, I know that takes a, a lot of um, behind the scenes uh, construction, I would um, assume, and computer systems and everything else in terms of uh, managing the water, the spray, um, and the irrigation. And again, just to echo what I've heard before, um, with the passive lawn issues, my fear would be that um, we would have those overrun as we have had for the last years of the entire park um, by the dogs. Um, I certainly appreciate the owners wanting their pets to have exposure to trees and lawn and areas to run. I certainly get that. Um, but I think I also agree that it's a very small park and to put in uh, a dog run. And we know that there's issues with that, with the EPA, with regard to runoff and all of this other stuff. Um, that that's a very difficult um, nut to, uh, to crack. Um, other crazy thought, which doesn't really have to do with the park, but maybe something uh, to think about is on the 91st Street, which is a closed pedestrian, that's where a lot of people take their dogs now and they run the balls up and down the hill and they play. I'm just wondering if there's any consideration Obviously, this is outside of the Rupert Park budget and what we're planning, but if there's any consideration to try to figure out if on that closed street, if there can be some kind of a, a dog run put in there, um, just as an outside thought. So that also provides a space and a place for owners and their dogs uh, to, to be able to also enjoy an open area where they can run. That's just an a crazy outside idea, but uh, just, um, again, I think it's a really small park. And uh, my concern is, again, with the passive lawn, even if we do put you no know, fences around it, then I'm just afraid it's going to become overrun if we don't provide some other space for uh, dog owners to take their dogs. Thank you. Nancy. Thank you. Uh, Thank Alex, you. Before we go on to more questions, I feel like there, the, in the last two speakers, there were a few questions about the number of swings, pavers, plants, what kind of water features are happening, whether or not they are the more sustainable ones. Can you just, uh, can you just respond to some of that before we go further? Sure. Um, so in terms of pavement, uh, we, we are looking at not, we're not using asphalt. Um, we're looking at alternative like concrete. So it won't be asphalt. Um, and then the plants shown on the pallet are native plantings and we will, we will strive to do as native plantings uh, just to create you know, a, a native habit. It's for a native habitat. So we will look at native pallet. Um, sorry, Trisha, the, oh, the water features. So the, the new water features will have controls, activators, um, 
So there will be, you know, sort of, I don't, I don't want to use the state of the art, but there will be new, uh, new features that we're putting in. Um, and then I'm trying to think, what was the other question? Irrigation. Uh, irrigation. Uh, likewise with that, I know right now there are controls on the site. Um, so uh, elements like that will be uh, updated uh, along with every other utility, lighting, electricals, plumbing, um, all utilities will be uh, updated so that they are up to speed um, with current standards, et cetera. So I think that'll be across the board. Uh, and I appreciate, I think it was um, Sarah, uh, Gal she mentioned that, you know, I think that's great to think that way about the native plantings and um, to strive to incorporate that uh, just to create, you know, a, a healthy uh, environment and biohabitat at Rupert. Cause it has, the, you know, it has sort of that, uh, that rare gem that you see like the canopy in the tree. So I appreciate that comment. Um, I hope I, and, I hope. And I Alex, answer. I'd like to add one thing about the swings. Um, oh, oh, the swings. Well. Yes. The swings. We're actually putting in as many as we can. Um, you'll see that there's a lot of trees around the area. One of the reasons that there aren't swings in the park right now is because of the tree cover and not a lot of flat area. Um, in, in the area where you see the swings now, there were some trees that were taken out for poor condition. So we are able to put in as many as five swings. If we find that our landscape um, unit and arborists go out and Oh no, Leslie, I think you froze. Yeah, she looks, uh... yeah, I, I think what uh, Leslie was trying to say is that uh... Uh, we, we uh, as this uh, plan evolves, uh, we're going to continue to have the arborist uh, check on the condition of the trees, and if it's possible for us to uh, max up the number of swings by expanding that uh, footprint, uh, we will uh, certainly do that. Uh, we, we are uh, uh, very focused on trying to include as many swings as possible in the park. And if I could just also respond a bit to Nancy, uh, it should be uh, physically impossible. Uh, for these spray showers uh, to stay on 24-7. Uh, they, they're going to have what a, uh, they're going to be interactive. In other words, they're going to, uh, somebody's going to have to uh, press a button in order for the spray to go on uh, for maybe five minutes or uh, 10 minutes at a time uh, maximum. And, uh, and then they get shut off and uh, would ha uh, somebody would have to go back and press the button again. Uh, DEP at this point has imposed a new rules to conserve water, uh, which we are going to uh, obviously comply with. And uh, uh, th this spray shower is not going to be wasting any water. Thank you, Steve. We'll go to Diana and then Julia. Hi, I just wanted to also voice um, the desire for a dedicated dog space in the park. Um, I moved up to the Upper East Side this year from the Financial District, which is much less densely populated than the Upper East Side. And we had four dedicated dog runs down there, which was not inclusive of the space made available to us in, the, in Battery Park. So I hope this can be considered in order to meet the needs of the community for this park. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to the neighborhood. Um, can we go to Julia? Hello? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, good. Um, I think it's really exciting that the park is getting the attention and thank you for everything that's here. Um, I think I'm getting the feeling and I joined late, I'm sorry, that the slope of the park is going to be kind of um, leveled out. Is that right? I, I, Alex, can you confirm? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I had some connection issues. I apologize, everybody. Um, yeah, we're, we're striving, Julia, to, uh, to site engineer it so that we are, are finding right in that central where the ridge happens is to sort of do a play on cut and, cut and fill and sort of level the site as much as we can to make it more, more gently rolling than so abruptly sloping. Um, so that's what we're striving to do. And then make those connections with the paths as well. Um, so there, there's not as many stairs or no stairs, we're gonna have that one flight and sort of minimize that right now. Well, I think it would be an overstatement to say that we're gonna live. <laughs> yeah, we're doing, we're gonna have the one flight, but um, 
to, to answer yes, that's what we're striving to do. We're trying to, to, to make it less, uh, still have a slope, which I think is, it's really remarkable. There's, there's still going to be a 15 foot grade change, but how that's experienced so that that 15 foot grade change can be experienced rather than just uh, seen. Uh, I guess that's that's the simplest answer that people could actually experience that grade change and just look at it. It would not it would not be leveled off. That would be, yeah. We'll that still would have right. a fifty foot grade change. Yeah. And we we couldn't we couldn't actually level the park because you can't put that much soil on top of the root structures of the trees. And as Alex said, there's eighty eight trees that we have to protect. Um, so what what's being le not leveled but smoothed out are the paths themselves so that you can take a wheelchair or a stroller through the park without having to go up all those steps. Thank you. I was just um, thinking that the slope is such an unusual and, um, you know, natural feature of that space. And it sounds like, you know, I just saw the drawing and the drawing, um, looked like it had really leveled it out quite a bit. So it doesn't sound like from what you're saying that that's it at all. Um, I just see it as a really beautiful feature that, you know, mm. that's natural. So anyway, I think it sounds like it's going to be, you know, it's going to be just a gradual slope and it's not being eliminated. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll go to Mubeen for the last public comment on this, and then we'll go to our board members. Mubeen, you can just unmute whenever you're ready. Mubeen may have stepped away. Um, I know that she's in this, a meeting at the same time, so we'll we'll switch over to um, our our public members. Um, if you don't mind, just just because Rita lives right there and has been such a long time advocate, I'd like to go to Rita first to ask some questions, and then we'll go in order that I see everybody. So, Rita, go ahead. Rita, just unmute. Unmute. There you go. Hi, I have a lot of people to thank first. Ben Kalos, I don't know what I'm going to do because ever since I've been connected with Community Board 8, you have been there whether you were a member of Community Board 8 or you were our city council representative. You have been incredible. And if this is your swan song, it's what a way to go out. This is fantastic. And thank you. From first, and the other thing is, is that Trisha and Barry, who spearhead all of our parks and waterfront, thank you for the job that you do. It's really appreciated. And I know it's not always thank a, a thankful job. The other thing is, is Alex and Steve Simon from the Parks Department, you have done an, an incredible job I'm going to come back to that in just one moment. First, I want to ask you, Alex, what was the height of the fence around the park? And the reason I ask that is to be sure that people can hurdle the fence and end up using that as a sleeping area. Uh, the, the proposed perimeter, Rita, is, uh, is, at, our, is at four feet. Uh, which is the the height of fence that we're we're, we're typically putting uh, at at parks currently? I don't. I hope it works. Um, and I'm scared. I'm scared about that fence. The other thing is, is that we did ask for a dog run for for those who are tuned in here from the community. And there must be a reason that there isn't one. And I was hoping that you or Steve Simon would say why a dog run was not considered in this park or why it couldn't be. Well, I think a uh, reader, uh, I mean, what, you know, what we had to do, it's a very difficult uh, uh, balancing act to try to satisfy all the different uh, needs. 
in what uh, other people have pointed out is a relatively small park and uh, where uh, uh, you also can't take advantage of, of the acreage that uh, all of the acreage that you have uh, because of the uh, topography and uh, uh, the, the problems with uh, uh, fitting things in with the, uh, with the slope uh, uh, situation. So, uh, you know, our, our number one priority was to expand uh, uh, the playground and uh, uh, make it more usable for the, uh, for the children. Uh, that, that was the, uh, uh, you know, the, that was the mission we were uh, uh, anointed with. And uh, that we were told that was our main task, was to, was to make it uh, more usable uh, for children. And, uh, and then we were told that, you know, we, you know as, a, as a, just a, a matter of course, uh, we needed to make this uh, park uh, more accessible. We couldn't leave it with all the different levels and all the uh, impossible ways to, to navigate through this park. You can't get from one to, uh, place to another without uh, uh, coming upon uh, uh, one or more uh, uh, sets of stairs. It was, it was just a, a crazy uh, mm -hmm. uh, a mishmash of, uh, of uh, different uh, little uh, pockets of, uh, uh, which were not even that, uh, uh, didn't, uh, didn't even fit together and didn't really uh, 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 allow for uh, easy accessibility. And, uh, and, and then we were told we needed to fit in a comfort station. And once you put that in, um, uh, you're basically now using up uh, uh, all, uh, most of the, uh, all of the uh, different corners of the park. I mean, we, uh, as, as we said before, uh, this is not a finished product. Uh, you know, we're, we're continuing to accept input and to listen to people and, and to see what, uh, the, uh, uh, what we can do to try to satisfy the community. Our goal at the Parks Department is always to try to satisfy uh, as many people as we can uh, to try to give the community something that it wants and that it will use. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, we're going to, you know, that is still, you know, that remains our goal. Uh, but, uh, uh, but listen, I wish, uh, uh, I, I wish we had another uh, more space. And actually what I would like to do, I, I think Nancy's idea is uh, somewhat intriguing. I'd, I'd like to, uh, I'm not that familiar with the closed street and, and, uh, but I'd like to take a look at that. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe there's a, an opportunity there to uh, uh, create some kind of a, a space for the dogs. I would, uh, that would certainly make, uh, uh, make it easier for us to design a, uh, a, a park that, uh, uh, that satisfies the other needs that we have. Uh, but uh, so I, you know, well, I think I would like to take a look at that. And that would, I mean, that's outside of our jurisdiction. And, and certainly we would need the support of the community board uh, to, uh, uh, to pursue that idea. Uh, but I think uh, uh, Nancy may have put something out there that's worth uh, uh, that's worth looking into. Well, I I I disagree with that because that a that closed street uh, has to be open for emergency vehicles. It also is a double or triple uh, city bike rack. That street is used as a dog run every single day. By, I mean, you can come by, I could tell you what hours to go by at social hour for the dog owners. And there is nothing precluding anybody from exercising their dog. They <clears throat> are responsible for picking up after their dog, but that is a natural dog run. It's a sleigh run, it's a sled run and when it snows and it is a bike run, it's a, it has a bike, a dedicated bike lane in it and it has everything it is used by the community we have uh many functions on the street when the weather is permitting we've had movies we've had concerts we have everything and all the dogs are welcome to all the concerts and they do come and i must say that so i am not advocating for a dog run on East 91st Street. It belongs to the city and it is a closed street, but not closed that a dog couldn't crawl under the barrier at either end. But then again, you have, uh, just as we watch our children, people have to watch their dogs. But I will vehemently fight that because that is already taken that is already dedicated for the community. But I wanna thank everybody. You have done an incredible job. I wish the 
fence around the park was six feet, not four feet. Um, because I've watched when the when the fence is as high as it is, I've watched people climb that fence when it snows to use the park and be the first people to put footprints in it. But again, thank you. Thank you all around. You have done a masterful job. And yes, it needs a little tweaking and thank you. Yeah. Great, thanks Rita. We'll go to Judy, then Felice, then Irma. Um, hi there. I have a couple of quick questions. First is always, uh, Parks, will you please send Will this presentation so that we can have it? Oh, already done. Thank it's you. On our website. Thank you. Um, can you give us a little bit more? I know what Ben said is wishful thinking, but what idealistically the timing would be for this park. I don't know if that's you, Steve between filing for all the permits and it and the actual building when can we look for a completion are we looking in 23 24 and how long would the work take well i'm uh um i'm assuming that this will be a 12 month project um um i uh, again i ha i hesitate to go what a uh, uh, Trish, uh, somebody's posting a cute uh, picture of your baby. Um, so um, uh, I, I, I think, you know, we're going to, uh, I mean, we're going to have to take a look at, uh, you should probably ask me this question in January, but, but uh, assuming. Okay. Then let's talk about it in January. I'm done. The next question I have was there was a picture of the big belly trash can. Will that be part of the project? I That's strongly hope it will be. Well, I, I'm sure it's we're talking about having uh, uh, maybe a half dozen of them. I'm sure it's not, there won't be just one. There'll be a number of them. Oh, great. That's terrific. And um, Alex, your paths on that diagram that's up now, your paths um, that cross from when you come in from 2nd Avenue and go towards 91st and 90th, how wide are those paths? They're, they're currently ranging. They're about we have them at about eight feet wide on the plan um, so that you could comfortably have two sort of aisles going through someone coming and someone going at the same time. The or I ask for the width, I guess at 92nd and 91st, is there any chance that we could get some more seating in there? There's an awful lot of sitting in that park and it just kind of looks to me like there aren't enough benches on the, right side, which I call the senior side and the left side is the children's side. So if we could get some more seating in there, um, I'd certainly be very happy with that. Also, whether we have pets or we don't have pets, can we please have signs in the appropriate area that say no pets? And Alex question, I know we don't have the money for the park house now, but knowing that we'll certainly in the new year, the new budget will be coming up. We'll be asking people for the funds. So as you plan this, will you be planning the plumbing for the park house as part of the um, initial project? So that's a great question. Uh, currently there's the utility shed that's all the way to the, the west at the top of the slope. So in master planning, if the comfort station is in the future funded, We'd like to have the connections sort of uh, the conduits lead to that what would be a future comfort station. Uh, but yes, that's where we were looking to make the connections uh, if the, the comfort station is, is something we want to pursue in that location. Uh, yeah. Strategically, that's where they were to go. Okay, well then, please, when you come back in January, have that slotted in. Even if we don't have the money right now, I'm sure we'll all be very active trying um, to find the money for the comfort station. And lastly, I'd like to agree with what um, Rita said, uh, my own personal opinion and from what I've seen in various parks, I think the four foot fence is not high enough. Um, I think we're gonna have a terrible homeless problem. I think there'll be a dog problem because four feet, a lot of the dogs can go over a four feet fence. Um, 
I just think we need a tall offense all the way around. I don't know if other people agree with me, but I certainly agree with Rita on that. I'm sorry, can you just guys just, I thought that we were talking about a four foot fence for the interior one that's supposed to separate uh, east from west or children's area from non-children's area. Uh, Alex, can you just confirm what that parameter fence? Oh, it is. That's also four foot. So, so our okay. typical, our typical perimeter one is uh, it's four foot and we shaded them different colors. So it would, it would be clear that there is a perimeter fence at four and then an interior one also at four that separates the playground area uh, from the rest of the park. So um, yes, they're correct. They're, they're saying four foot, it's perimeter. And then the back one would be seven foot that breaks the, the adjacent property. I Sorry. think what's shown is the red fencing around the part. Four, fen four feet is definitely not enough. It's going to change the whole use of the park if we have a low fence like that. Thanks, Judy. Noted. Can we go? Can we go to police? Then Irma. I'm sorry. Could I just uh, uh, sure? Get, uh, uh, there's something that uh, Judy pointed out that uh, uh, that I, I want to make sure that we don't miss. The uh, when we talk about the comfort station, uh, uh, also also known as a park house, uh, what's important to keep in mind is that it doesn't. It contains more than just bathrooms. It contains a space uh, for our staff. Uh, where we can also store uh, supplies and equipment. It's a, a base of uh, operations uh, for us to be able to maintain the park. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, very, it's a very important uh, uh, facility for us to have. Uh, and it, it gives us the opportunity to assign a, a worker uh, to what we call a fixed post, to have somebody working there uh, all day uh, uh, for, for a full shift. So it, it's a very important benefit to the park. Well, that's why I asked that the plumbing and electric, even if we don't have the money for the park house, at least put in the necessary needs so that when we do raise the money, you're not digging up the whole park to put in plumbing and electric, that it's already there. Uh, Judy, I have to give you an, uh, another uh, a star. Uh, that's another very <laughs> good point. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Judy. Can we go to police? Thanks. I've spent um, countless hours at this park with my daughter when she was little. So it's so nice to see um, such a wonderful plan and a lot of hard work that went into this. Um, I want to reiterate um, the request to have a dog run um, in the park, even if it's a small dog run and look at ways to um, have it be an inexpensive um, dog run. Cause I know sometimes in the parks construction of dog runs, they can be fairly expensive. Um, I think if you can find a, a space to have um, an, an attractive dirt area with um, some some drainage and fencing, that would be um, that would be terrific. And I think an, an important um, community benefit. And I think it would go a long way towards protecting the rest of the park. Um, Judy asked what I was going to ask about the comfort station. Um, if we don't have money right now to do it, let's make sure to put the infrastructure in place um, or carve out the, you know, the, the conduit, the channels, whatever is needed um, to make it um, easy and cost effective to put in a comfort station at a future point um, so that we're not digging up the park. Um, on the point about the four foot fence along the perimeter, um, I would strongly encourage it to be a higher fence. I too am concerned about um, the potential um, for the park to be um, safe at night, for um, about having um, homeless um, use it as a sleeping area, especially with the increase in, in homelessness um, in the area. I think it also provides the parks department in the city the um, opportunity to close the park um, in the overnight hours. So I would, I would ask you to rethink the, um, the four foot height perimeter fence. Um, the question then that I did want to ask um, is about rat control um, and what the plans are to do something about that. Cause the park right now is, does have a very significant rat issue. Um, and so I'm wondering what your, what the plan is to 
um, to address that and to deal with some of the, I mean, I think already the plans will deal with a lot of the overgrowth that allows um, for the rats, but there are probably a lot of um, rat dens or whatever the correct term is um, in the in the dirt in the park. So if you could talk to that, I'd appreciate it. So I can't speak for maintenance and operations. I know there's a whole nother, there's a world uh, that they specialize in on that, but I could say that um, what we're gonna, one thing is that we're gonna have dedicated trash receptacles, as Steve said, across the site that are enclosed. Um, and then we're gonna try to have also dedicated planted areas that are bordered um, that just to help minimize where these, you know, little crevices, et cetera, can happen. And I think that just, Overall, just the, the, the planning of the site to have those dedicators, the playground, the water play, the clean edges, um, yeah. hopefully having everything be planned uh, and reconstructed will, will help uh, sort of mitigate that aside from what, uh, from a maintenance and operations side, uh, aspect of this. Um, but I think that's what we're going to strive for. And then just, um, just in general, the plants, the trees, everything needs to be cleaned. We're going to have those items in the contract for everything to be pruned, cleaned, uh, brush. Um, and then at the high point where the playground areas, I found when I go out there, there's always areas where there's so much brush, leaf litter, um, that's just hanging out in these dirt areas that are sort of not um, accessible. So I'm hoping as they open up and they become accessible areas uh, and that those brush areas are cleaned out, uh, that um, you know it's going to help uh, with impact that as well. Um, and I know mosquitoes had come up and other things. And I'm, ho I'm thinking that with everything, uh, part of this plan, it's going to help mitigate that overall. Um, so that's what we're striving for. Again, aside from uh, a maintenance and operations aspect of this. Thank you. Oh, our, uh, our park manager, uh, uh, Sheena Kaufman, I believe is on the call. And uh, uh, I'm... Uh, I mean, we, we don't need to wait for this uh, project to be uh, uh, to be uh, completed in order to deal with the rat issue. We should be dealing with that now. But I, I'd like to make the point, as I just made a little while ago, that I think the key to this would be having a fixed post uh, a maintenance uh, person on hand uh, during the day to uh, keep the park clean. And uh, uh, you, you, you want to... You want to uh, uh, you want to keep uh, any uh, possible uh, food uh, uh, scraps away from the rats, make uh, the park less attractive for the rats, less of a reason for them to go in there. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but honestly, uh, uh, there, there's a, uh, uh, you know, there's a, um, there's an associated uh, problem with the fact that we have a lot of, uh, of uh, stores and buildings around the park uh, where people put out their garbage and the rats uh, then uh, feed off of of what people are putting out, and then they come back into the park uh, to uh, I don't know to uh, uh, to burrow in and uh, uh, to uh, sleep at night, or whatever. But uh, it, it's a it's a uh, it's a constant issue, and uh, and especially uh, uh, in an urban setting, and especially with a park uh, that's right next to uh, uh, to buildings and uh, and uh, and a lot of commercial uh, uh, stores. So. Uh, I mean, we, 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 uh, we should be dealing with it. We should be uh, sending in our exterminators. We've had a, a, a fair amount of success uh, uh, dealing with some new uh, exterminating methods lately, and uh, we should be using them in this park as well. What? Um, can we, before we go on to Irma, uh, just another question from uh, for our parks team uh, from our council member. Um, can you please let us know the name, the name of the vendor that you are planning to use for the play and spray equipment? Uh, sure. Uh, the name, the vendor is, uh, it's, uh, landscape, it's landscape structures is the, the manufacturer. Um, and they, they've done an array of projects across the city. Um, but that's, that's who we're, we're working in, uh, we're, we're working with currently. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Can we go to Irma and then Craig? Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? We can hear yes. you. Yes. Yeah, well, I just wanted to thank everybody who's involved with this and for the presentation. Thank you, Alex and Trisha Barry uh, and uh, Member Kalos. Um, it looks like a great plan. Um, I actually like the lower four foot <laughs> fencing. So I guess I'm probably the only one 
like I said, I just maybe aesthetically would look nicer and welcoming, but I don't know about, you know, the safety concerns now regarding that. But um, so I just wanted to put my two cents in on that. And uh, thank you everyone for, for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Irma. We'll go to Craig. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the presentation. I think this looks like a great plan. Though that being said, I think I'm just struggling a little. So I'm not a dog owner, much to my family's chagrin, but I was just looking up statistics regarding um, dog ownership in the city because I really was trying to understand from, from a factual data-driven standpoint what the real need for a dog run would be. And I found an EDC report that talks about um, about 27% of New York households owning dogs. I found um, statistics saying there are 80,000 unique dogs registered in the city, though the estimate is that only one in five dogs are registered in New York City. And then I found someone who had mapped out um, the density of dog ownership in the city, and not surprisingly, our neighborhood is one of the highest um, neighborhoods in, in terms of per capita dog ownership in the city. So I'm struggling here because on one hand, I don't know that I see anything in, that is presented in this preliminary design that that is, let's say, expendable, if you will, but I think there's a clear need for more dog runs since we don't really have any except for, I thought it was only the two along the East River in Carl Schurz and down at 63rd Street. So I, I, I don't know what the best solution is here. I don't know if there's a way to fit anything in here. I'd ideally like, like that to occur. I just don't know that I can say comfortably that there's anything that we can really change about it. I'm thinking also about whether it would be realistic. I understand 91st Street may not be the best place to do it, but with New York City DOT now looking to re-envision our streets, maybe there's some program that can be devised that could be an open streets type of program that would allow for pop-up dog runs to be um, provided in the city. I, and as someone who doesn't own a dog, I don't fully know if streets are the best places for dogs to be running around in terms of their safety or just ensuring that they have the ability to be with an enclosed location and not make anyone who, um, any other users of the streets uncomfortable who are, are on the sidewalks and stuff, but maybe there's something there. So I don't know if this is more for that upcoming topic that we're gonna be discussing, but I just thought I'd put those thoughts out there. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Craig. I see a couple members of the public, but I'm gonna to go to uh, other board members first before we go for one more, one more round here. Uh, so Billy. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Great. So I'll just try to keep this brief. Um, it was a great presentation. I'm eager to kind of dig in more. I just, you know, for a while we've been hearing from our neighbors who uh, would like to see a dog run. And we all know the statistics on not just the, the population density in our neighborhood, but the surge of dog ownership in particular that happened during the pandemic. And so I'm wondering, and forgive me if I missed it, whether, you know, Parks, when you come back to us, you might be able to present a version that shows what it would look like to have a dog run and, and, and where that might go. Uh, I actually just lost the slide that I was on, but I was looking at, you know, is there a way to consolidate the swings in the playground space? Is there a way to um, do something around where the comfort station might go to create uh, that, that sort of corner on 91st? And second, you make that available for a dog run. I'm just curious, you know, what the alternative might look like because it could really, make this a bit less of an abstract conversation if we knew where it would fit. I, I grant as everything you're saying about the space being tight, but it could just be helpful for our discussions. I mean, my general view on this is in perfect world, we would have more dog runs in this community. It's really difficult and in a world of trade-offs, maybe we can't get that in this reimagining, but it would be nice to, to see it in some form to then be able to discuss it, if that makes sense. 
Well, I, I think the, the only way to uh, uh, the only way to fit in a dog run would be to sacrifice something we have there. I, I don't know how we would, um, and, and that would be a very hard choice to make. I mean, we will, uh, I mean, you know, we will go back and huddle and uh, and think it over again. Uh, but uh, I, I hesitate to suggest that we can present a plan that shows where it can be, uh, where we can fit it in. Um, uh, we. I, 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 uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go back and talk about it. And, and one last thing is, um, you know, so we have two passive lawns in the design. And I'm just wondering, is the space where the comfort station would be, is that space large enough where you might be able to have a passive lawn there and a comfort station of some sort? Uh, you know, that, so that area there, Billy, where the comfort station being proposed, I'm not going to say no, we could study it. It has a slope there. So we'll be, we'll just have to work with the grades. Those two other past layers, we made them a little bit more rolling. Um, but I'm not going to say it's not possible. I think it just needs to be to study it potentially to see how, if it could get intertwined, if there's a clearing uh, that could happen there uh, where the, the future comfort station is being shown. Is it fair to say that that slope would also make it hard for the dog run to go in that quadrant? Potentially with, you know, it could be, um, but it, it's, you know, it's worth, you know, we could, like Steve said, we could look at it. Uh, we could see, you know, what, what's possible because each side has the, you know, I know there's erosion problems on each side. So we're trying to, uh, to sort of balance programming, but then also site engineering uh, and making sure that uh, these issues won't come about again after the park gets reconstructed. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. And I just want to again, applaud you all for the great work on this. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Billy. Um, I before we go to the member, the public members, I just want to ask a couple questions myself. Um, you know, jumping off of that passive lawn uh, question, a, a piece to that, I, I see that there are two sections of passive lawn, and I have I have two questions about this. One is that overall the plan is beautiful, but it also is extremely green. And knowing Rupert Park, it's it's just never that green. Um, the, the tree canopy that's there is just so dense that it really doesn't allow for a lot of sunlight to come through. So I know that we've talked over the years about irrigation being the problem. You aren't taking a lot out a lot of trees from this area. Um, I can only imagine that it's gonna be just as shady as it is now. Is it, uh, how are you getting it to be this green? Or is that just something where it's not actually gonna be as green as we, this is not gonna be like all, open grass everywhere, is it? Uh, it's not gonna be all open grass. So the plan shows green, um, but what we're gonna strive for is, so we do have the dense canopy. I think it's a mixture of um, not just decompacting the soil that's there. It's very compacted. It's sort of, it's almost like it's it's solid. Yeah. Decompacting it, getting these planting areas to be defined. Um, and then the plant palette, I think it's just picking also the right plants that are hardy, low maintenance, uh, that, could, that will strive with that canopy above them. Um, and that are well placed even for the slope. I think when um, when this does get in the future, when it does get reconstructed, um, that the plants get planted uh, correctly for sloped areas, and then we have these areas defined so that they're they're instead of being sort of peppered around, they're in swaths. And so that if we plant you know a hundred of them, uh, even if we lose a few, there's still that sort of uh, swath of planting rather than just peppered around the site. Um, but I think it's also a combination of that and just strategic planning to planting that's happening underneath the canopy because right now it's so segmented with the seat walls um, and the trees and there's sort of these layers of how the plants are around and it caused I think a lot of uh, dirt compacted areas uh, mm -hmm. and so we're going to open these areas up uh, and then make them more swaths of planting um, and then along with that you know I think we're going to have paths and less um, wall steps um, edge uh, to the planting so there'll be a little bit more of um I think just filtration, water, and just the site working cohesively. It's very segmented. And I think it's led to some of these plantings also struggling overall. Um, so I think overall, you know, we're showing green and I think we're going to strive to do that, uh, to, to make these areas, make sure they shine uh, and that they remain as green as possible with, with just smart planting and planning on the site. Um, but, but Alex, I, I think Trisha's question is, uh, was also maybe... Um, aimed at the uh, passive lawns. And is it fair to say that, uh, that what you did was uh, take advantage of uh, areas 
that were less shaded, where the tree canopy opens up and uh, where, the, uh, where you have less of a slope uh, so that we could provide some lawn space, which people were telling us uh, at the uh, uh, scope meeting back in May they wanted. You know, they hated the idea of looking at all these lawns uh, that were uh, shut off, were fenced off. They wanted to be able to use some lawn space. And uh, I, I thought what you managed to do here was at least find two areas uh, uh, where that could be possible. Right. And sorry if that was an answer. It's um, the two areas right now, the slopes would be just a little bit more gentle so that they're accessible. Um, and like Steve said, there'll be a little bit, there'll be slightly less uh, rigid with the slope. And so we tried to, to find a spot where we can open it up and where the canopy, along with the playground water play, et cetera, but where the canopy was a little bit more, uh, a little bit more open to let that happen. But I think overall right now that there's so much washout that's happening um, and just uh, it's so compacted that like it's just it, that it's sort of calling for, uh, for it to be, uh, to be redone. And, um, you know, I'm fairly confident we can do it. Um, it's just going to be it require smart, smart planting and um and it's strategically placed the, the way that we're doing it so those were the two pockets and you know i, I know it wasn't in the presentation we go into it but the passive lawn sort of spills out into the seating area so there's this idea that it becomes like a sort of overall plaza there as well that the two kind of go hand in hand um so sorry if i didn't answer that clearly steve sorry about that um thank you for that i guess my and that somewhat answers my other question i mean i i was at the scoping meeting i think i've been at every meeting with regards to rupert park i will continue to be at every meeting with regards to rupert park and and i have to say and as somebody who does not own a dog i i have to say that there there were a lot of comments just like tonight about the need for a space for dog owners um and when steve had said that everything that essentially what we see here, if we were to make space for a dog run, we would lose something. When I look at this plan, my only thought is that we have two passive lawns. And if we reduce the size of one, could we get something as small of a dog run as what's in, I think it's Washington Square Park or maybe another park, which is just really like a, as a run through, you know, you, it's a, it's a, you know, track, if, if you will, or something like that, that's super small, I, or maybe it's in another park that I remember, recall that, but I, you know, I, I would like to see to others points what it would look like to have something there, or if it's not a dog run, if there's some other middle ground that we can come to, um, that we can find, there's just such a great need. Um, and I worry, I share everybody else's concerns about whether or not this stays as beautiful as it looks. Um, if we aren't able to meet the needs of, of our neighbors and you can see from our agenda, this is not even the last conversation that we're going to have about this tonight unfortunately. So um, if you could please take a look at that, that would be really great. The other question I had was about, and I think Steve, you kind of answered it, storage. Um, I think right now, and I don't know if the Muslim volunteers are still on, but I was texting them. I think that right now they use some of that storage, the, that terrible dilapidated building that's currently there for storage for basic tools that we use to, to clean up the park from time to time. Will there be that same option in this new plan and will it still be accessible to the volunteers? Well, um, I, I don't know the extent to which uh, the uh, existing, uh, 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 whatever that contraption is that we have there, uh, whether or not that's accessible to them. But uh, certainly there will be, the intent would be to have space within this uh, park house uh, slash comfort station uh, where uh, uh, tools, equipment, uh, uh, maybe even a small uh, desk for the staff member, um, uh, someplace where the staff member could sit down and, and maybe uh, eat lunch. I don't know. You know, uh, but uh, uh, th th we would want uh, some uh, space there. And I would hope that uh, uh, we would be able to satisfy the needs of the, of the volunteers as well. Great. And to the, to, you brought it perfectly up to my other question. You keep mentioning this dedicated staff member. Is that something that is currently like budget in a budget that we know that when this, this all gets done, we would have a dedicated staff member? Is that something that would require additional funding in order to get that? Well, I think, we, you know, we're talking about something that's now, uh, uh, you know, at, at least uh, two and a half years down the road. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's it's not in uh, it's not in the FY22 budget, uh, but I I would certainly hope that by the time this uh, uh, project is completed, uh, there will be uh, money available and uh, uh, or there'll be a staff person 
that we could uh, all, that you know that that's already part of our budget is already in the district who could be assigned to work uh, out of this park. Great. Um, last question, and then we'll go. Um, I, don't, I see our council member has his hand up too. Um, I know that in recent years, it's been the parks uh, kind of project. It, it's been parks kind of uh, parks has made a dedicated effort towards hiding fences, um, particularly in playgrounds, making it feel less like children are caged in and more like the fences are a part of the landscape around them. I'm. I, 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 I was, I'm so excited to see most of that black railing and fencing getting taken out because I think it's terrible and I think it darkens already in a dark space, but uh, with the interior fence one, I, I just wonder if in January you might be able to show us more pictures of what that will look like. And I hope that to the best of your ability, you would hide those for that fencing as much as possible. Rupert is, as we already said, very dark because of the canopy, but adding all of that fencing and seeing it sliced in half with a, a more fen with a fence, even if it's one singular one, I like, I, I would love to just see that as hidden as possible. And I echo the sentiments about what others had said about the four foot fence on the, um, on the parameter, I think. I, I think it's worth reconsidering that. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say that our uh, that our strategy is to hide fences, uh, but it certainly is to eliminate uh, what we feel are uh, excess fencing in uh, in, uh, in our parks. And that was uh, uh, certainly a uh, uh, one of the major goals of our uh, of our uh, last commissioner uh, Mitchell Silver, uh, uh, who also uh, uh, believed very strongly in lowering the heights of the fences. Uh, to uh, make the parks uh, feel more welcoming, as uh, Irma Torres uh, mentioned, and and to uh, to invite more people into the park. Uh, but uh, his his goal, and and certainly this this is a uh, park is a prime example of uh, of where there is too much there was too there is too much fencing, and how it can be improved uh, by removing much of it. And uh, uh, Alex, I think you you can come back in January and uh, be able to show a, maybe a better idea of the fencing that you have in mind uh, for the playground area. Uh, but uh, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that we're gonna hide the fencing, uh, but we certainly want to uh, uh, keep the fencing in the park uh, to a minimum. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back, Tricia, and we'll, have, uh, we'll try to have more visual. We tried to just make, instead of having uh, s many smaller runs of fences inside the playground area that we typically see around the swings and around, the, we tried to just have one clean sweep across one line uh, on the site at the moment, but we'll have, we'll have more of a visual so that you could see uh, how that reads with all the other elements in there. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have that available. We just tried to do one clean sweep across uh, okay. on the site. So there's not all these layers of fence that you're looking at, but noted, definitely noted. Thank you. Uh, can, Will, can we go to uh, Ben Kalos, then Sharon Pope Marshall, then Samuel Adler, who's been very, very patient. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. So uh, while we've been in the presentation, I took some time to just mark things up. Uh, in terms of the comfort station, is there an ability, uh, this, this station is actually the same footprint. Is there an ability to move it up closer to these four trees and then use that additional space that's opened up for to basically leave the dog run where it is and then fence, fence things off a little bit? Uh, for some reason, I, d I don't see the screen. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I, I, I do see the screen, right. so I can take that. Um, I, I think that we would really need to work with our arborists on that. We, we may be able to move the comfort station location a little bit, but probably not as far as you're showing it there, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. because we're in, you're encroaching on um, some of the root, the root system. And the path, the path itself, you have to remember, is going to be on a slope. So we won't be able to front the comfort station directly on the path, it needs to be set off the path a little bit um, because we'll have to pick up the grade. Got it. 
But it, we, we can certainly look at that. We can look at with that with our architects and the arborists. Sure. And I, I see the swing sets in the corner there. Um, and again, that's going to be more of a question of the root systems. Right. There's that and, one right. tree here. Yep. So if this tree leaves, then we right. can fit in the and two. When, when a tree leaves, it, it costs a lot of money because there, there is restitution for the cost of the trees, um, removals of any good trees on the site. Parks Department pays restitution just like anyone else would. Um, uh, the good so, news so is, <laughs> wait, the good news is that there's 700, I've put a, um, Steve, is it half a million or 750,000 into oh. buying parks new trees all over the neighborhood? Uh, well, I don't know. I, um, well, you mean uh, it, uh, over the course of a number of years, uh, it, it, it could be that much. But uh, there, there should be about one hundred fifty thousand dollars to buy new trees for the neighborhood. Um, I, I think you're I think there might even be uh, uh, two hundred or something. But uh, Leslie, but, would that cover the cost for the I, two trees? We were, I would need to talk to the arborist. It, it depends on the size, the health of the tree. Um, there's a lot of factors go in to, into determining restitution costs. So we, okay. we can look into that. Uh, the other piece is if this, I know we have 78 trees. If we went to 76, this area. All the, all the 88 trees. 88 trees. Sorry. So, so if we went from 88 to 86, that allows more swings and allows the water play area to go in over here. Um, and then just by way of for the baby play area in this area, um, this was a design that I was able to find on the landscape interactive. And for this two to five area, this is a, another design that has a lot of interaction that I felt was uh, worthwhile. That is it. Great. Thanks. Thank you, council member. Um, can we go to Sharon? Wait, one second, can, can I just ask Ben, Ben, will you be able to forward that uh, those slides to us? All right, he's giving me the finger. <laughs> yes. Hey, thanks, thanks, Ben. I just wanted uh, also to uh, thank uh, ben Kalos uh, for his advocacy for this park um, and everyone else, especially uh, Trisha. Happy birthday, Trisha, and uh, also Barry. Um, I do not think that we should ask the Parks Department to reimagine the park with a dog run. I do not want one inch taken away from family and from families and children who are uh, really the intended users of this park. And I am wondering if this is something that we might need to take a vote on um, as a committee, but I leave that up to you, uh, Tricia, and, and up to, to Barry. I think that we have a a uh, wonderful uh, a first start with this. And, you know, not every park can have a dog run. And there are some parks that, uh, because of, of, of the layout, is, is certainly more appropriate to, to have a dog run. We, it, we just cannot have every dog, every park to have a dog run. And I'm not sure that we should reimagine it in such a way that there is even um, the slimmest of possibilities that space can be taken away from people who uh, very much support this park and use this park on a daily basis. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably in the minority on this, but I uh, wanted to, to, to make sure 
that um, the committee knew that um, I'm opposed to this reimagining. In terms of the fence height, I find that lower fences are very, very much welcoming. I mean, it's just in, when you know what I. It's it, it's a shame that we have to have fences at all. But if we think that there might be a homeless issue, then I think it would behoove us uh, to begin uh, looking at ways other than raising the uh, fence height uh, that we might uh, uh, work with um, the social services because of course homelessness and, and, and poverty uh, should not be uh, criminalized. Uh, but I am very, very sensitive to uh, the needs of, uh, it, especially in terms of safety and the needs of people to, to feel safe and to be safe. Um, and so circling back, um, Tricia and uh, Barry, I, I feel that reimagining the park to have a dog run is uh, really is, is a significant um, undertaking that um, I would suggest that it might need a vote. Okay, um, thanks, Sharon. I, Barry, I would welcome some of your comments on this. My feeling is that maybe we continue with comments and then at the end, but I, I am leaning against a resolution at this point, um, but I don't know, Barry. What do you? What are your thoughts? Uh, no, I'm, I'm absolutely against it. Uh, this is an information only. We're not going to take a position on any one element or the entire project until it's more well defined, which will be in January or, or beyond. Um, to, to take a vote on this now would be out of order since we have not calendared or agendered the item. So I think we have to move on to further discussion and. Uh, Let's see how this plays out, and, let, and let, leave it in the good hands of the folks in the Parks Department and our ben, and our Council Member Kalos, and all the good voices we've heard here this evening. Sharon, to just um, to your to your point, though, I mean, I think I would ask everybody, um, and we're going to try to close this up here pretty soon. But I would ask everybody to just to really look at the presentation, consider it, look at what's been proposed. We'll ask for the Parks Department um, to take our comments and to come back to us in January, and we will just see what gets presented there. And then we'll, we'll have to have another discussion then about, about, um, you know, where this all lands, but, um, I want to, I want to move, um, along here. I just, Barbara, you're the only board member who hasn't spoken yet. So I'll give it to Barbara and then I'm going to go to Samuel. Barbara, you can. Okay. I think I got it. Am I okay? Yes. I, first, I will echo what everybody said, but thank you and want to make sure we include the Muslim women. They have been unbelievable. I have a couple of comments. One I think was answered. I always thought the reason that there was no, uh, you know, it was just mud and no grass there was for three reasons. One is that the slope didn't allow for the irrigation and then the dogs. I think that you've answered the question about the slope that you would make sure that the plantings were, I just want to make sure the plantings were okay on the slope and that there will be the irrigation. Am I right about that? Correct. You were listening. Okay. Then I don't need to pursue anymore. I just wanted to make sure because that was a big thing. Um, in terms of the, the next item I'm involved with is environment. I hope that whatever um, flooring you use is the most up-to-date in terms of environmentally um, friendly and you know we're doing we're working on post ida and what can be done with resiliency so i just hope that the parks is looking for the most resilient materials to be used in terms of uh climate control um and i, I don't know if you want to answer it but that's my issue and then uh, we, we are. Yeah. We will. And also we, we're striving for as much permeability on the site as as we can to make sure that the site is as porous as possible. 
Okay, great. Then the third, I'm going to add in with the dog run. Um, first of all, in terms of the rats, um, my committee did what I found a very difficult committee. It, I have a thing about rats and we had the rat academy with too many pictures of rats to make me happy. Um, evidently, one of the big reasons that there were rats is because of the dog um, feces that are there. Dogs evidently don't choose their food well so that the rats are able to go in and get the food from the feces, which was pretty disgusting. Um, so the dogs are, but I do want to add another thing. And I think Judy and probably Steve also will have memories. I just have memories when I was new on the board of discussion about the dog runs uh, for the um, Andrew Haswell Green site. The fights that they had be first between big dogs and small dogs, and then between what the uh, covering should be, whether it's good for big dogs or for old dogs, to the point where there was physical fights and we needed police at the meetings. It was such a heated thing. This is an acre of land. If we go to the suburbs, there's many backyards that are an acre for one family. It, in addition to children and, and uh, families, the seniors use this area tremendously. I really feel that for a park this size, we will end up needing two dog runs is my guess, because I, I remember the stories with Big and Dog and certainly Culture's has two dog runs to separate it. I really think that we have to think of different areas outside of this park is what I would think of it. I do agree with Sharon on that issue. Um, Tremendously, but more from what I remember from other parts. Great. Thank you, Barbara. Barbara, I wish you hadn't brought up some of those memories. Okay. Um, I I think that most most folks have spoken on this, but we will go to I see last ones here. We'll go Samuel then Andrew, then Wendy, then Jane, and then Rita, you still have your hand up. So I'm not sure if you want to speak or not, but we'll give you the last word. So can we go to Samuel? Uh, yes, hello board and hello Parks Department, Alex, Steve, thank you for putting this together, great presentation. Uh, thank you for what everyone's doing for our communities, definitely needed. Um, I just, uh, Trisha, you kind of stole some of my thunder with the ideas here. So, but uh, I guess I'll echo as well as have a question. So in the passive lawn area, is that an elevation issue where it's going down where we couldn't use part of that as a dog run, even when you have to add in dirt and add a retaining wall, whether it be three feet or something, add a, 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 a railing or a fence to use maybe the, the center. Uh, Alex? Oh, sorry. I, so I had a little bit of a tech issue. Um, if I caught her, you said to use the past loaners for a potential dog runs. Yeah, so either the, one of the passive areas, possibly the center one. Again, I don't know the grading with it, but if it's a problem of grading going down, it's just not usable because we need a flat area. Is it possible with the um, mature vegetation to uh, add in dirt? Like we got to raise it up three feet, add a very small retaining wall, and put a you know, obviously there's a fence involved. Like, is that at all a feasibility? It, it, you know what, the simplest form says that the dog runs require, they require a perimeter, a fence um, to be enclosed somewhat rather than the passive lawn. And then uh, there is a great issue then there too, because it, it's just how it all gets uh, engineered to then enclose it. Um, and then I think uh, parallel also with a sort of a square footage, like how big that would be. Um, there has to be uh, AD access, there has to be accessibility into that, that area. So it becomes sort of a layering process of accessibility Gotcha. walling fencing and then also i think you said it the trees you know i i know it came up before there are these really beautiful mature trees and our arborist mm -hmm. kind of called them out the pin oaks um the honey locust um that are really uh, they're quite unique and rare to get such a canopy like that so when you layer all that uh and trying to sort of debt to, to create the dog run in those areas it becomes uh becomes a it comes complicated but um yeah. You know, that, that would be uh, just sure. talking out loud that that's sort of the, the layering of it for the dog run there. Sure, sure. I, I think um, who said it, maybe it was Billy who said that, hey, we'd love to get uh, an alternate view of what it would look like if we could squeeze one in there. I don't own a dog. I have no dog. No, I have no dog in a fight. Um, 
But uh, I do, I, I always say, take a look how many dog services are in this neighborhood, whether it be day sitting or groomers or dog stores is, and you know, it's, there's a ton and there's obviously a, a demand for it. Um, so, and I guess maybe, you know, cutting the baby in half, just an idea for the board, while the comfort station is um, to be constructed sometime in the future, maybe that area becomes a dog run until the comfort station goes mm. in. It would be a short-term fix. I know it's hard to give something and take it away. I know that's going to become an issue, um, but maybe that would be the middle ground while that area is not really being used and it's pending construction. So just a thought. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I said we're just, we've got four more people on this one. It's Andrew, then Wendy, then Jane, then Rita. I'm Andrew. Thank you for letting me speak. And uh, what a great presentation. I have two very quick questions, which is we haven't talked about lighting necessarily in this park. If you are planning on including lighting, I I'm also environmentally conscious uh, and concerned. Have you had any thoughts about using renewable energy sources to power the lighting? And then the second is I was just doing a quick and dirty search regarding plants that repel rats. It looks like marigolds, peppermint, and onions are some. There are also daffodils and rosemary. And so I was wondering if there was any consideration to possibly plant those as well. Uh, so the first question, we absolutely are look, are, will look at uh, security lighting on the site. I know there's existing lighting, but uh, there's sort of an array of lighting and it's, it's again, sort of peppered around the site. And so with the new design, we will have security lighting and coordinate that with, uh, with DOT and how how it's going to strategically be placed and make sure the luminaire, luminosity on the site's correct. And with that, uh, any luminaires or lights that go onto the site will have downlighting and sort of minimize light pollution that's being given off. Um, so definitely we'll have security lighting on the site. Um, and then in terms of planting, um, I, I heard the marigolds, the peppermint, I, I, there's, there are many plants um, that we can pick. I think it's gonna be a matter of, uh, you know, whether it's uh, cat mint, et cetera, that we could put in there, but at the same time that they don't um, sort of, that they're, they're a mate, they, they can be maintained. Um, I know something like a marigold and, and that they're perennials, that they come back every year for us, uh, so that they don't have a, an annual or sort of one term planting and then they're gone. So, um, but we definitely look at plants that, that can repel and, uh, and I think that are parallel to that, that are, uh, you know, native, that they don't become sort of invasive to the site. And then we, they go rampant everywhere. Um, Great. Thank you, Alex. No problem. Can we go to Wendy, then Jane? Hi, thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes. Great. It's a really beautiful plan, and I'm very excited to have a, a, a renovated park. I no longer have little kids, but those days are not that far behind me. And I'm really grateful that there's the idea of the very wide pathways because my double stroller was 44 inches wide, which is pretty much the same width as uh, ADA acceptable doorways to get wheelchairs through. And I've also pushed wheelchairs. So this will be just a tremendous asset to the community. I wanna say, however, that as a mom, uh, my kids could easily scale uh, a four foot fence. And uh, I had twins and one of them just spoke to you just now. And uh, I, I, I seem to have kept them alive, but it was definitely a struggle. And we played a lot at various parks, including Rupert Park and also Carl Schurz. And I'm telling you that like they were hooligans who could scale fences and escape easily. Um, a four foot fence isn't tall enough to, for a mom's comfort. And as for a dog run, I think a dog run's a great idea because I think having kids exposed to dogs is wonderful and having the dogs in a contained space is wonderful because if you do not put a dog run in, the, as a practical matter, those dogs are there anyway. I'm going to very gently suggest that you could possibly consider where you have the passive lawn on the 2nd Avenue and 90th Street corner because it's a very sloped area that kids are not playing ball on, they're not resting or quietly reading a book. People aren't you know, spreading their blankets and reading out like that. It's a sloped area. It could be remediated like they're doing in the Riverdale area of the Bronx with some sort of tiered structure they have on sort of wooden tiers, the sort of gentle ones. Um, and I think that that is probably a good idea for dogs. You throw the ball, the ball, the dog runs down the, the different tiers and runs back up. And uh, you don't have to take up nearly all of that space. It doesn't have to be a large 
dog run. I think Trisha, you mentioned, and by the way, happy birthday, Trisha, uh, that there was a, a, a dog run in um, Washington Square Park. There is, it's on the south side. That was a very successful addition. It is not large at all. It doesn't need to be large. If you really need to take your dog on a profound run, you're going to go to a different park. This is, you know, you're romping before you go off to work or whatever, or sometime in the middle, mid afternoon. I think a dog area for as a parent i'm speaking as a parent is a relief because the dogs tend to be more contained uh the the feces are more contained and uh it makes it safer to bring kids into the park and and i'm just really excited to see what you all do because i think this is a tremendous asset to the community so thank you everyone thank you thanks wendy we'll go to jane then rita hi thanks very much um just to comment on what Barbara said, as I, I mentioned before, I live really near Carl Schurz Park, and there are actually two dog runs, one for large dogs, one for small dogs. And both of those, there's an overflow area and now in a lawn which has no pets on it and the fence has been breached and it's ridiculous. But you, you, you're gonna need more than, you're gonna need more than um, one run because the big dogs, and the small dogs don't play well together. So uh, just a thought. And also they're very, they're large. So the dogs can run, they, they throw balls, they chase and whatever. It is a big operation. And, it, it, uh, and I echo Alex, because I've watched and I've, I've discussed you know, with the people trying to get in, there's a fence around it, there's a, they're raised, it's concrete. It, it takes a lot of space, quite frankly. And net net, this is a park for people. You know, I love dogs. I've had dogs. I've had dogs in the country, not in the city. So I, I appreciate the, the problems and the, and the desire to have a run. But I don't know. I really think this is, uh, I, I love the idea of a passive law and space for people. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Okay, Rita, finish us up. Happy birthday. Showing <laughs> um, it in a very weird way. And, and many, many more. Uh, again, thank you to the Parks Department, Alex, Steve, everybody. I, if I lift anybody out, I'm sorry. I can't mm -hmm. see your name and I'm you know. But I have one request and uh, Barry will back me up as hopefully, uh, as to what happened when we started to dig for the Second Avenue subway. It was every, every rodent, every problem was rodent. People didn't care about the noise. They didn't care about the lack of parking spaces. They cared about rodents. I have been asked by the towers who actually, uh, are on the border of this park is if we couldn't do rodent mitigation before construction started. By that, I mean taking out the shrubbery where they seem to live and they burrow into the ground. So the minute we hit that, you dig down, you're, it's, it's a free for all. So uh, I hope that the parks department takes that into consideration and does some mitigating of rodents before they start constructing. Thank you, thank you for everything. I think you did an incredible job. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Just a reminder to uh, everybody, we, again, the, this vote is gonna happen on uh, January 13th. So uh, for those uh, community members who would like to see the final, the kind of more final design, please come back on the 13th. Right. And, and let me thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> President, let me wish you a happy birthday. And this right. is still your birthday, although we've been out of the two hours, it could be, never mind. Anyway, um, <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for, for bringing this to us. Thank you, Leslie Peoples, for all the work you do. And especially thanks to Alex for this great presentation. Genuinely appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you all in in January. Happy New Year, by the way. Thank you. Happy New Year. I, I, I think I also need to uh, wish uh, Trisha a happy birthday. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to be the only one on the call who does not hey, wish her a happy birthday. So I. I uh, but I also want to clarify an answer that I gave her earlier. 
uh, with respect to the uh, uh, the tools for the Muslim volunteers. We will do our best to try to accommodate them uh, within the park house, uh, but understand uh, we're going to need space for our own equipment and tools. And uh, if we if we can't do it within the park house, uh, what we can probably do, which we've done in uh, plenty of other places, is uh, put in a, a job box, uh, which they would have a uh, it would be locked. Uh, they would have a key to it. They would have uh, a, uh, a continual access. They would not have to depend upon us to get to their tools. Uh, so uh, uh, that may end up being an option that we would use instead of uh, uh, giving them direct access into the uh, uh, park house itself. But listen, we're talking about something, uh, uh, you know, two, three years down the road. Uh, we'll find a way to uh, work it all out. Thank you, Steve. On that point, um, members of the Parks Committee and others will be beginning now to raise funds to make sure that Park House becomes a reality in the shortest possible time. So we're going to, we have our work cut out for us. Thank you. Again, thanks again. We now move on to the second item on the agenda, the discussion of planning for floods and resiliency in public parks and the waterfront in Community District 8. This is joined with people from the Environment and Sanitation Committee of Manhattan Community Board 8. Rita, I'm sorry, Barbara Rutter. And may I point out, we've been at this for two hours now. Yeah, I, I don't know if Koss is on the phone. I'm not sure. Um, I'm co-chair with Koss Bagni, uh, with, uh, um, the Environment and Sanitation Committee. And we discussed by post-Ida what resiliency. We had some speakers and we were given the task of going back and it will take months to do so, but to come back with some suggestions. So what was discussed is that we would go to individual committees with um, each of their ideas. So the Parks Committee, of course, is a very important one with green space and the parks and, and the different equipment that's used, of course, transportation and housing and so on. And so we're here now just to say that we would a preliminary discussion of how can we approach it in the parks in terms of uh, not only green space, but what type of green space uh, was brought up, what type of lighting will be in parks, um, tree pits, there's, what they're talking about is tree pits that are um, have special type of, of, of grounding that will be um, more flood resistant and, and help with floods. And um, we're just here to ask if the parks will at some point pursue this. It's certainly uh, not an answer today, but. In a, word, in a word, yes, of course. I think we all appreciate the need for resiliency and being prepared for the uh, climate change that's uh, surrounding us now. What I suggest I'll discuss with Tricia, we may want to form a subcommittee of the Parks Committee to, to gather those folks in our midst and on our board who want to deep, 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 deep Dig, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. We know what we're saying. <laughs> Keep into this. Um, and I think Trish and I will have a discussion offline and we will post something in our in our minutes of the meeting. Great. And we'll certainly work with you. And you. I didn't wish you a happy birthday. So, of course, I have to now. Well, yeah, thank you so know. much. But it's in his, you're a little early for me. Oh, I'm Not sorry. Thank you, but Trish. <laughs> Um, I just want to add, I, you know, I, I, I think I was at that meeting, Barbara, and I was the yeah. one who, one of the ones who suggested that you do this, do the very hard work of going committee to committee and talking about how we integrate and how we kind of adopt the sustainability and resiliency principles and everything that we do. So I, you know, I, I think also just practically, I think that every committee and particularly our committee will work better if we had a document to look at, or if we had something to to then edit and 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 kind of form, and I I would love to see our board and every committee come up with a you know a, a, these kind of these aspirational goals for what what this looks like uh, in our in in our committees uh, and in our community. So um, to the degree that we need to do so through a subcommittee, which I think is probably right, Barry, um, Good idea. somebody yeah. to draft something and throw ideas on paper and then for us to work off of that, I think it's probably uh, a, a better productive way to, for us to start. So maybe Barry, um, I in January just think that we need to have Rupert Park be the only agenda item. Um, I but I but I think by February maybe we can um, Barbara we can like really just have give us ourselves a couple weeks to really like form something and form some ideas on paper for us to kind of feed off of and then we can go from there. And I'd love to be part of that committee and help out, of course, and so Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Okay. Very good. 
Good, great, <clears throat> great contribution, Patricia. Thank you. And again, happy birthday. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> Tell Teddy I went to the train show and I bought him a Q train. Um, okay. Let's do this. I mean, are we good? Trisha, yes. this is me being a grandma. <laughs> great. Thank you. Moving the agenda. I think we did very well on that item, uh, Trisha. Um, do we need to discuss a, a possible neighborhood off leash dog park area in Community District 8? We need to just have just two, two minutes on this. Um, for anybody who's still on the call, who is, um, this is, we, we've just talked about dog runs for a very long time. Um, but I, you know, we recognize that this kind of came up beforehand because of, because, uh, near John Jay, which is where uh, I live now, um, there were a lot of neighbors who came to us asking for off-leash hours or for some sort of help with uh, with having really no access to to any place for their dogs besides uh, the street. Um, so we we recognize that this is a problem. I know I, I thought I saw our council members on, um, which is great. So we'll yeah. let him speak in a second. But I thought I saw folks from um, Julie Menon's office, uh, we, we just need to, you know, this is, this has come up to us before this, this ask has come up before, not just in the con in the, in the, you know, context of Rupert, this has come up for us for John Jay. Um, I can only imagine that it will continue to come up for us. So I know everybody's tired of talking about dog parks tonight, but I imagine that this is not going to be the only time that we're going to talk about this. And in order for us to be proactive, we just, need to really be thinking about um, even maybe in uh, like how we do budget and when we do those budget talks varies, but we need to be proactively thinking about how we can meet those needs. Um, and to, to Sharon's point, maybe, you know, maybe it's not the current park space, but maybe it's something else we have to, um, but this is a need that has been brought forward by our community members. And we, um, you know, we have to figure out how to deal with that. So, um, you know, we can, I think we should let our council members speak, but, um, you know, that's kind of why that was on the agenda. Got you. <clears throat> Good, Ben. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I missed, I missed, uh, I, I guess I missed the community board meeting. So looking at the map, you've got Rupert, you've got Samuel C. Barry, we have Marx Brothers, which is getting raised and turned into a 700 foot tall tower. We have Asphalt Green and then we have Stanley Isaacs. Um, and if you take a look at Stanley Isaacs, this is the playground where I've, I tried to get the hockey league to take it over. Um, I tried to get parks to work with me to even repurpose this into something that would get more use by the community. Uh, but it, it's just sitting here. Um, most of it's just in complete disrepair. This is the only playground equipment here. So you basically have, uh, an entire city block here. It is a city block that's just, so over here could be a one dog run over here could be another, but anything that, and it already has a comfort station. So I'm just gonna throw it on the map of anything we can do to activate this park would be a good thing. Um, and it's it's uh, five blocks from Rupert. So just, and it's right there. Mm. That's a really good idea. Um, An excellent idea, Ben. And I, 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 I was the only person who didn't wish uh, Trisha happy birthday. So happy birthday, Trisha. Thank you. Um, Council member, before you go, I just wanted to make mention and let you know that I heard from somewhere a rumor that out of all of our council members, there's only been one in our city who's dedicated so much of his funding to parks, and it was you. I don't know if that's mathematically true or not, but you have that reputation. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's all true. That, that'll take credit <laughs> for it. Very good. Okay. Barry, maybe we can, um, I think that we should probably, we, we probably need to be putting John Jay specifically on the agenda in the future with regards to this or just firing in that area in order to address the specific needs that were brought up there. We certainly don't need to do that now, but we, we need to, you know, we Fair need enough. to make sure that we do that. Oh, but I see Craig's here from John Jay. Yep. Go ahead and unmute. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, now I'm over at Carl Scherz due to the uh, construction. Um, I, I know the people that have intentions of attending this meeting pertaining to the dogs are the people who follow the rules and want to do it appropriately. But there, as mentioned, numerous people at Carl Scherz, there's two dog runs, but the place is overrun, the basketball courts and all the grass areas. 
or is overrun with dogs also. So there's blatant disregard for anything that's put in place. Same thing happened at John Jay. Um, signs were put up, the people immediately took them down. Uh, I've warned the Parks Department for years, uh, Park Committee, not the Department, um, pertaining to this issue until it came to a head and there was two physical altercations. Someone went to the hospital um, after being jumped. Um, and, you know, I, I think it, ideally it sounds great, but that's not the way that it works, unfortunately. And I'm not sure how the enforcement works because the PEP, they don't start working until 10. And when they do show up, they show up for a flyby. Um, no tickets are written. Um, talking to the actual people, the maintenance people who work at, at the parks, uh, not Sheena, but the people who actually are on, on, on hand, not that Sheena's on hand, um, that's their biggest issue is the dogs, dog owners. Um, so I, I just wanted to mention that. I, I, it's an enormous issue and there's always people who are just going to flout the rules and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what the, an the answer is, but um, I, I think no matter what you do, it's just not going to work. There are always going to be people who are just going to do whatever they want and their dog can't play in the dog run with these dogs and so on. So, um, and I, I'm, I know Carl Schurz, I mean, John Jay isn't that big of a park, really. And I also think from a cleanliness perspective, and I know Trisha, we had a meeting, happy birthday, by the way, um, <laughs> um, you know, about the area, but now where the dogs run around is the basketball courts. I mean, kids have, there are numerous class, gym classes there. There are kids there all day. I couldn't, I, my kids are, past the point of um, playing at, at playgrounds, but I would never let them play there. It's so unsanitary, it's terrible. Um, so I know there are other areas, you know, in, in the back that we talked about, uh, perhaps, you know, that, that fencing area, that 10 foot area that we discussed. So maybe that's something, but people just, you know, you give them an inch and they take a yard. Um, and the dogs, people let their dogs run around in the kids' playground area, in the, the toddler area, and the older kids' playground area. Um, so, I, I mean, those are things that to be cognizant of. And I'm not really sure how to address them, but I just wanted to mention them. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. Sure. Um, and thank you for being so vigilant and letting us know about instances where PEP officers are needed or, or other intervention is needed. I think that just in general, what we've learned from Rupert and certainly what Craig has just said, just exemplifies the fact that every park is unique when we talk about users and usages and appropriate usages. And it's just, it's, it's worth our while as long as it is to, to really dive individually into those parks. And so, uh, you know, we will do so in the new year. Um, yeah. Good. Okay, and now we're getting an update from the New York City Parks Department, Sheena Calvin, our district manager. Sheena, would you join us, please? And there she is. Welcome, Sheena. Good evening. You can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Before I move on, happy birthday, Trish. I want to make sure <laughs> I didn't leave you out. <laughs> um, um, welcome to, I'm welcoming myself to District 8. Um, I'm getting to know all of the properties in District 8. Um, so just bear with me a, a little bit. I am from New York and I do know most of the parks in New York. And Rupert Park is right around my doctor's office. So I know Rupert Park because I have to be there when I'm waiting for my doctor's you know, appointments. So I'm familiar with it. Um, and it's a very unique park. So thanks for, thanks for the presentation from everyone and everybody's input I think is it's a great time we finish with it um so I've been with parks for 35 years for the no, most people that whoever doesn't know I've been here I started from the bottom now working my way up to the top and um I've come from several districts uh, mainly in the Harlem area so I am 
quite familiar with, with things that have to get done. Um, District 8 is new to me and is very unique. Um, the sect I have, District 8 in District 6. So um, I am familiarizing myself um, with all of the areas here. John Jay, actually I started working at John Jay, so I'm familiar with John Jay and it's come a long way. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to give you a brief update um, on the, the um, East River Esplanade from 100th to 101st. Um, I was going over with Steve earlier today and they actually finished it. They started on the 7th. Um, they um, did some pave, pavement work and they actually finished today. Um, I don't have any pictures because I wasn't able to go by, but my regional manager informed me that they completed it today, the pavement area um, going north. Um, so this is just setting up the tone for, and they're going to be doing some fixer up and work going north until they can start the project um, fully which has been fully funded to repave the Esplanade um, going north and going south, both ways. Um, so that's a short term on that. And if it's anything that anyone has any questions about in about any other areas, um, you can bring it to my attention now and I'll see if I can address it. Great. Thank you so much, Sheena. Um, and I know Judy's got a question. Um, I actually just want to flag one issue for you, though, uh, off the bat. Um, we last month had um, another community board member who uh, uh, is associated with uh, uh, Upper East Side for UES for Black Lives Matter or BLM. Um, there is a, a vigil that happens at Carl Schurz Park right in the central plaza area there. And they are getting almost now, um, daily vandalism, um, of, of just the most horrifying type and degree. Um, if, if we passed a resolution last month on this, but, um, just today, Sandrea Coleman sent an email to Barry and myself again, um, showing that there is feces and smeared on, on the posters over there and they're, they're ripped down regularly and torn apart and all sorts of terrible things um, that we kind of talked about last month. Um, I, our committee passed a resolution on this and hopefully it's making its way to the parks department and making its way to you. But I just wanted to flag for you that this is something that's extremely concerning for members of the community. And we would love uh, anything parks can do to assist in stopping this from happening. Well, um, and you're talking about on the 86th Street yes. in East End. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I'll I have staff in the park, and I'll you know make sure that the staff is a little more vigilant. Um, and I'll try to get our PEP unit, um, which they don't start until 10, um, to frequently check and you know the park area to do, to, you know, just to check it out, and I would to to make sure that you know, things are not happening. Um, I, we just don't have, you know, permanent pepping, pep there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping like this was an isolated incident. It was just an incident that, that happened um, that, you know, one time, because I did read it. I, um, 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 Leslie sent it to me yeah. um, last month because you brought it up at the last month's meeting. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that's just an isolated issue, but we'll keep, we'll keep an eye on it and I'll have our pep unit frequently check the area because we're having a lot of problems with the dogs off leash as well. So, cause that was an issue. Um, they're off leash at times and they're in areas that they shouldn't be. So that's another issue that we have them checking on. Um, so I, I asked them to keep checking and I have my supervisor to check on um, quite often to make sure everything is going on, going all right. And no one's vandalizing um, the, the area, especially using dog feces, human feces, whatever type of, nonsense they're using to you know to mess up the black lives matter um you know signage and representation so we are looking to that and i'll have them i'll speak with the supervisors tomorrow okay thank you um my only other uh my request to you is that in the new year um i would love to go on a walk with you uh along our esplanade or to and ask it to just talk to you about our parks and and point out things if you if you would be so willing to give us an afternoon 
um, I would love to, to talk to you more so about our parks and help and, and help answer, give you some background or any sort of information that we can about the parks in our area. They are beloved. And um, if you can tell from this ridiculously long meeting, that's on not even our longest <laughs> meeting, uh, to be honest with you. Um, we, I think that it would be wonderful um, to be able to talk to you about some of the longstanding issues that we've been, that we've continued to work on. We had a great relationship with Wes and uh, we're really looking forward to building a strong relationship with you too. I second that. Sure. No sure. problem. Uh, can we go to Judy and then to Rita? Judy, you can unmute. Yeah, I just want to say I've met with Sheena to talk about the parks in the 60s, uh, not just St. Catharines, but all the others. And I think we have a real winner with Sheena. She's great. I gave her a list of problems and they were all taken or most all taken care of in a very speedy manner. So I think we're all going to look forward to working with her. I think she's going to be a great um, <clears throat> help to our community district and the parks here. Great. Thank you. Can we get a Rita? Welcome, Sheena. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna keep you very busy. I have a question. Would it be possible to put in a surveillance camera that watches, you know, that is, focused on the Black Lives Matter uh, area so that, and, and people let people know that, you know, th this has been going on too long and just asking people to behave nicely doesn't work. So I just wanted to know, is there a possibility of a surveillance camera? Well, the parks doesn't really have the funding to do that dear. Um, it takes a lot, you know, uh, it takes a lot to get it. A lot of our surveillance that's around our parks are, comes from NYPD. Um, I don't, we don't do surveillance because we just don't have the budget to be able to supply that, to be able to, you know, to monitor it or anything. Um, so maybe that's something that the NYPD can help with, um, in this, in this particular area um but we just don't have the budget and money to do that it's just not funded for us like that sheena i understand that would it be possible to go to some our elected officials in the area and get the funding for i don't know uh, where would we find out how much this costs is it from the nypd could you find out for us and then i can i'll i'll look i'll I'll, me, I'll go over it with Steve and then we're looking, we'll probably go over it with our capital division to see how we will be able to do this. And then we will have to find the cost of maintaining that and who will maintain it. Um, the problem is that we don't, we don't have anyone to maintain it, meaning watching over it, make sure that we're able to um, right. see, you know, change the video or how often the video has to be changed. It, it's a lot that goes into when you have surveillance like that. You know, NYPD has a bigger budget and they have, they have more staffing than we do. And maybe that's something that the elected officials could help with, but probably being monitored through the NYPD. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Kalos. Uh, Rita, the answer is, uh... Will, can I have power back to share? You have it now. Thank you, that was quick. Uh, so this is the location that we're talking about. That's where the BLM materials are. And so this is 86 and East End. That is the Argus camera that you're speaking about uh, that you'd like to get installed. So I think what we, what this committee can do in CB8 and we'll work with Will to also do that is just, uh, reach out to the 19th precinct, have them point that camera at the location. And then it's just a matter of pulling the footage. So the, the camera is there. We just need to make sure the NYPD uses it. I believe it's going to take a FOIL request. We, we don't need to, we don't, uh, 
it just so the camera may be pointed in any direction. We just need to ask 19th Precinct to point it at the park. There should be two lenses in there. And then just we don't need to do the foil. We just need to ask them to like start monitoring that portion. And then when something happens in the due course of reporting the crime, 19th would pull it. And th that's one of the things they did when the uh, Hanukkah was defaced two or three years ago in terms of pulling footage so that they can ID the person who did it. So Rita, we'll, we'll work with you and Will and the team on it. We've got 22 days. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sheena. Thank you, Sheena. Well done. All, all business. I have two items of uh, all business to report. <clears throat> the following, the, uh, Harvard, the hospital special surgery has come to us with a uh, proposal for their building over the uh, FDR drive, the Kellen Tower. And they're, they're <clears throat> excuse me, they plan to uh, improve the Esplanade from 70, 72nd to 78th. The question was, what kind of maintenance will they do? And they say they will extend their current maintenance of the Esplanade to this area up, up to 78th Street. Current maintenance includes irrigation and landscaping of plantings and painting of railings. Second item, the Manhattan Aerial Tramway Station project is being constructed in two phases. This is the tramway plaza. <clears throat> the phase one of the east elevator opened to the public in October. They're now working the second phase, demolition of the existing elevator and the foundation work. The second elevator platform is complete. They anticipate installing the remaining glass panels in the next few weeks. The overall completion of the project is dependent on the weather and regulatory sign-offs. They'll keep us informed at the next upgrade. Update, brother. Thank you. Any other old business? We see Charles Whitman has a hand raised. Go ahead, Charles. <clears throat> um, the uh, I don't know if it's old or new business, but the uh, the first phase of 81 through 84 Street, uh, the Esplanade renewal. Um, just trying to find a, an update on the status of the presentation uh, because the presentation was originally scheduled for uh, December, and uh, also there's been no no attempt to uh, to reach out to the community to to us and in, in the area, as far as uh, you know, getting input on what the, whatever they're getting ready for presenting. And um, I don't know whether in any case, I just I just wanted to raise it and find out whether you, you folks could help us find out what's what's going on and whether we can uh, make sure to keep us in the loop. <laughs> Charles, I'll look into it and we'll I'll get back to you with, with whatever answers we, or non-answers we get in the next couple of days. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you would it be a parks presentation or would it be a DOT presentation? I think joint. I think it's joint, really. Okay, we'll go to parks and we can go to DOT. Okay. Well, wasn't the original, the June presentation was done back in uh, originally as a joint presentation. I don't, I don't want to pretend to know who should be the one presenting. But there was a joint at the time, so I don't know who really is is running. Well, if if Parks was involved, we, we certainly can make inquiries, and in, and we also have friends at uh, DOT Manhattan, so we can talk to them as well. Okay, I'll get back to you, Charles. Great, thanks so much. <clears throat> Thank you, Trisha. Next, that's it. Okay, I get to wish Trisha a happy birthday before everybody goes. Oh. Wait, wait, it's her birthday? Why didn't they tell us? <laughs> Mr. Davis, can we, do you have anything else to add? I, I do. Um, at John Jay Park, the um, seating area reconstruction project mm -hmm. has made the two pull-up bars inaccessible for the next year. If I'm not mistaken, in District 5, there are no other pull-up bars. Um, here's one is in the Pine Tum in Central Park, could Parks see it to perhaps move the two pull-up bars to an area that's accessible in John Jay Park? Um, you know, there's a massive work, uh, you know, adult community that uses them. Um, it may seem small and petty, but uh, for those who use that, use that park, those pull-up bars are a treasure. We've kind of asked this in the past, but Sheena, we, we will send Sheena an email about this tomorrow and see if there's any way or any way that they can, that they can place those anywhere in the, in the vicinity of that area so that you guys can still use, use them. 
I, we did not ask Sheena this in the past, but we, when we were originally talking about the work that was done there, that was discussed. And, um, I feel like if I'm remembering correctly, the answer was that they would get back to us about where they would be used, but I don't think honestly, we ever got an answer from there. So happy to, happy to, to ask this again. Wonderful. The last I received, I'm sorry. Oh, sure. um, no. I received, you could hear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I received a complaint about that. The pillar bars is actually um, is in the area that they're redoing them at, um, in that area of the construction. And they are going to um, re, um, I guess, redesign that particular area with workout. To move that area, there is no room that we, we can do, we can take those bars and plant them in somewhere without you know, messing up another part of the park, uh, inviting another part of the park for that. Um, and I do understand that it's going to be a workout area, but the area, the workout area is going to be, re, is being re, redone over <clears throat> with this construction, with the current construction. So, so in another part of the air park, I don't see where we can put it put, you know, utilize that without it affecting some other part of the park that we're utilizing. You're right. I walked it daily and there, you'd have to remove some piece of equipment for the play area to, you know, take that out to put the bars in. So, okay. If you can noodle with it and we can find a small area, that would be wonderful. And my last request is I spent five years with pencil council member Kalos getting the basketball courts, uh, the, the surface area painted and the basketball um, backboards, new ones installed when they took them down uh, during COVID and when they put them back up, they put the wrong rim up on the Southeast basket one. It doesn't support nets. And the whole endeavor was to be able to have the community Hi. shoot on basketballs and hear the swish and have nets. Mm. So if you can replace the rim on the Southeast basketball court, that would be wonderful with the right rim that you can, the community can buy nets for. Seems small and petty, but it's part of the game. So thanks for your help. Okay, I'll look into it, see if we have some available and then we can do the change if they are available. Wonderful. Can you send me an email just with that or can you send the board office an email with that information just so we can follow up too with that? Just the locate the exact one, please. I will. Thank you. Okay, Judy and Craig. I was going to move to adjourn. Greg? Um, that was going to be my birthday present to you. <laughs> I'll second it. Well, get on with it. it. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Thank you all. So Happy much. birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Have a happy new year, everybody. Happy, happy new holiday. year, all. Good night. Bye -bye. Thank you all.